Welcome to College Football, presented by Geico. And welcome to the Pac-12 on ESPN. Hottie Toddy comes to the Bay. The Ole Miss Rebels, for only the second time in program history, make a trip out west to California to take on the Bears of Cal here in Berkeley. Um, Ole Miss came to Fresno to play Fresno State in 2011. This is only the second trip out west to California in program history. We kick it off in a moment. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Courtyard Fairfield, Four Points, and Spring Hill Suites. We live by the golden rule. Northwestern Mutual. Northwestern Mutual, we hope you live life differently. And Wendy's new giant junior bacon cheeseburger for a limited time only. It's game time between Ole Miss and Cal. Bob Shoes and Brock Ewart, Allison Williams here in Berkeley. Justin Wilcox in his first season as the head coach at Cal. Let's take a look at his plan for success brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. How do you stop Shea Patterson? You got to change the picture, blur the picture. They love to play in space as Ole Miss. They don't do a lot, just 28 plays. Want to change that picture at the snap. They want to limit the space and then ultimately like any elite quarterback you want to mess with their tempo and their rhythm the worst thing for Justin Wilcox and he's played these systems before is to watch the chains move to watch a young quarterback get comfortable and confident he wants to challenge and disrupt the timing of that offensive system red redshirt freshman Gabe Chiminez has it on the tee and we are underway Jalen Jones deep to receive and this one will sail about four maybe five yards deep so it will come out to the 25 yard line for Ole Miss. And as we take a look at really what is a terrific combination, Shea Patterson, in order to be successful, you need targets. He's got one in A.J. Brown. He sure does, and it's not hard to see where he's at today. He's going to be in the middle of the slot. Ole Miss runs two, three formations. That's it. And I'm serious. They run 28 plays. Michigan a week ago when we called that game runs 280 on their call sheet. It is simple. It's out on the playground. Trust your instincts and Shea and AJ. Well, they play within those constraints very well. They start two by two, and they start with Patterson on a straight drop back. And a slant very close to the first down marker. A gain of nine and a half. First play of the game to Demarcus Lodge. How much tempo will we see from the Rebels tonight? A lot. I think at every snap, uh, Cal is not deep, especially their big bodies up front, and they want to move in as fast as possible. How much control does Shea Patterson have of this offense at the line of scrimmage? All of it, and he's very comfortable within it because it's not complex. He's under some pressure. He'll heave one down the sideline. Incomplete. Once again, looking for Lodge. And there's a little line gain. First time, very traditional. First snap, just play very base defense. Next snap, run a little game up front. Right, mixing and matching who is rushing. Number 20 tonight is an enormous part of the game plan for defensive coordinator Tim DeRuiter. He knows this scheme inside and out. Justin Wilcox, equally minded. It's a defensive minded head coach. Play clock down to 10. Third down and a half yard. High throw, and it's hauled in by Trey Nixon. He climbed the ladder, and that's a big third down conversion across the 50 for Ole Miss. Did you see how long the young quarterback rode that play fake because of it? Look at the linebackers, three steps up. It creates that space that they covet. And you've got four guys that can go up and get it in this receiving core. That's the first catch for the redshirt freshman, and a big one. Patterson, off play action. He wants a deep ball again. Drops it into Metcalf inside the five. D.K. Metcalf, another redshirt freshman, and it's first and goal Ole Miss. You cannot put that ball in a better spot. And I love the athletic arrogance of Shea yesterday when he said to me, yeah, I can only throw it about 70, but I can throw it 70 on a dot wherever I want to. That was only about 50, but you can't place it any better than that. 42 yards, first and goal at the five. They'll run it for the first time, and barely back to the line of scrimmage is Jordan Wilkins. I think my buddy Trent Dilfer, who coached Shea in the Elite 11 program, would put this one right in his Dilfer dimes. When you don't break stride, 
And I'm telling you, it's not just one receiver. A.J. Brown may lead the country in yards coming into tonight. But A.J., DeMarcus, D.K. Metcalf, Van Jefferson, you already saw Trey Nixon go up and get it. They are loaded. They've recruited that position especially well. Plenty of time to look over. Ten on the play clock, second down and goal. Patterson with a little option toss. Jordan Wilkins trying to keep the play alive and just get back what he can. Actually, that's about the hardest work in yard that Jordan Wilkins will ever forget. Tony McCary eventually brought him down. Third down and goal coming at the fourth. I feel pretty confidently saying this. Both these offenses are going to move the ball 20 to 20. But the outcome of this game, and I don't know if it'll be at midnight or 11 o'clock, will be defined by scoring touchdowns in the red zone. Five-man rush, slant, end zone, incomplete. Van Jefferson had it go through his hands. So Cal's defense bends, but they do not break. And here comes a terrific kicker, Gary Wunderlich, on to attempt a chip shot field goal. And that was a terrific throw. That's the kind of velocity we were just talking about in the opening of the show. That, that is as tight a window as you're going to throw into. Things compressed down in the red zone. That one is on a receiver for a rare drop because another C thrown by Shea Patterson. 21 yards away for Gary Wunderlich to try and get Ole Miss on the board. And he's got it. So Ole Miss fails to convert on a goal-to-go situation. Red zone stop for Cal, and the Rebels have the 3-0 lead. Field goal breaks the ice for Ole Miss. Cal about to get the football for the first time. Bob Oshusen here with Brock Ewart, Allison Williams in Berkeley. Pac-12 after dark as Ole Miss comes west to take on the Bears. Luke Logan muscles it about two yards deep. Ashton Davis brings it out. It's dragged down at about the 16-yard line. So field position working against Cal, and that's not the only thing Brock working against Cal. They are without arguably their two best home run hitters on offense. Certainly the most dynamic receiver they've got. Demetrius Robertson, you see him eight, a soft tissue injury. He is out tonight, and that was a big X factor for Ole Miss defensively, a matchup that they wanted to make sure they won, and that's Trey Watson got injured. Unfortunately, a week ago, he is their only three down running backs. You can see a lot of parts at running back and a whole bunch of different receivers, but two of the more dynamic players out for Cal. Swing pass to the former walk-on, Patrick Laird. Makes a move in the open field, picks up a couple of yards out close to the 20-yard line. So the challenge for Ross Bowers tonight, move the football without his two best weapons. Watson gone for the year. Robertson out tonight, but he's been fun to watch. He's a tough kid. He's taken a whole bunch of shots here early, and he stands in there and delivers. Coach's son on both fronts of mom and dad. And weaving his way through traffic, trying to muscle his way out close to the 25-yard line. Two yards shot of the first down is Laird. And this is not your fun and gun system with Sonny Dykes. They're, they're going to spread it. Bo Baldwin came from Eastern Washington. Head coach prolific there at Eastern. I thought a tremendous hire for Justin Wilcox. And you're going to see a mix of tempo. You're going to see a more commitment to the run game. There's a good shot of Bo Baldwin. An extensive play sheet. Nice to have a coach's son under center that can handle all of it. Slant looking for a first down broken up. Intended for Jordan Vesey. But 15 breaks up 15. Miles Hartsfield got a hand in and knocked it away. And it's a three and out for Cal to start. Boy, and you just can't play it better than that. That is teaching tape for all those corners out there in college football. That's a slant route. That's a good call. The receiver, VZ, does a nice job positioning. But Hartsfield doesn't panic. He doesn't go through the wide receiver, pokes his hand in with perfect timing to force the three and out. Miles Hartsfield was the only true freshman that started all 12 games last year for Ole Miss. And Dylan Klump with a wobbly kick that takes a great Cal bounce and somehow stays in bounds, hugs the sideline, and gets close to the 25-yard line, out of bounds. 
at the 28. Well, next Saturday on ABC, a Big Ten battle. Saquon Barkley at Penn State, number five on the road, taking on Iowa at Kinnick Stadium, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Also streaming live, of course, as all our games are on the ESPN app. And Saquon Barkley, if there's a running back that can crash the party of all of these quarterbacks that are in the mix for the Heisman, he's yeah. probably the guy. A couple hundred yards against Iowa last year, totally took over, dominated that game. Actually, I think built some real momentum in their run to that Rose Bowl in the second half of last season. Not last season, special talent. Four-man rush, here comes a blitz off the edge. A dump off to Jordan Wilkins. He's going backwards. Tackle for loss for Cal, and a big loss at that. Back to about the 20-yard line. That's a loss of eight on first yeah, down. That is a four-man rush, and you're going to take a look at this all night. Teach a little football. That's a four-man rush with a safety coming. And changing that four-man rush, something that Shea has not seen through the first two weeks of this season. South Alabama, UT Martin, by no means anywhere near as exotic, as well-coached, and as disciplined as this Cal defense. Another four-man rush with a linebacker blitz. Long throw back to about the original line of scrimmage, so it will be third down and ten as Van Jefferson makes the catch. And when you say blur the picture for Shea Patterson, that's it, right? Bring four, but make it look to the quarterback like it's more than four or that it's coming from different places. Or, in that case, five. Or, yes, a total mix. And now a false start. Prior to the snap, false start, 67 on the offense, five-yard penalty, it remains third down. And it's not only messing with the quarterback. Ultimately, you want to mess with Matt Luke's group up front, the former line coach for a long time, 10th season at Ole Miss. You don't want to just line up and keep showing these guys the same look. You're not good enough to just line up and do it anyway. But on top of that, it is the best way to just disturb the timing and the rhythm and with a quarterback that is just making, you know, his sixth start of his career, give him a little different look each time. Only a three-man rush this time. In a traffic, and an interception. Picked off, Jalen Hawkins. He's got some blockers down the sideline, and he's out of bounds at the 20. That was a tight window that Shea Patterson tried to squeeze one into and more trouble not just the turnover for Ole Miss that's A.J. Brown down holding his left leg coverage drop underneath that inside seam that is a no-go that is a clean shot there from the defender to the legs AJ is a special special talent and that a boy that is good to see that is great to see an Under Armour All-American in both football and baseball he is a 225 pound special athlete only the second player ever to be an Under Armour All-American in those two sports Well, here you go my coach's clicker there's that seam route you just saw it now here's the deal if it's green and you see green grass Shea Patterson is taught to throw it there is nothing in that window if it is clear it is screaming you throw it if it's not you got to come out here or scramble and run that is a force, a rare force from Shea. Laird into the red zone. A gain of a couple. If it's screaming, throw it. Phil Longo, offensive coordinator, I love it. If it is screaming, man, and it's wide open to you, just throw it. But if it's not, find more green grass and then trust your instincts. Shea has done that through the first two weeks. As good as anybody in college football did so on that opening drive, but there is some of the confusion that those different fronts and coverages can create for a young quarterback. And now Cal has to capitalize on a very rare turnover from the Rebels. Powers over the middle, and that is caught about two yards shy of the first down by the true freshman tight end, Gavin Reinwald. So here's a big play. Third down and two inside the 15-yard line. A chance for Ole Miss after giving the football up to get a stop and force only a field goal. And my favorite player yet I've watched on tape. That, that big boy right there, 99. That is my guy, Malik McMorris. 5'10", 300-pound difference maker. 
the knuckleball. Now they're going to throw a little knuckleball here. They run the option. Patrick Laird at the goal line. Is he in? He's going to be reading the book. That's a touchdown for Cal. Former Walker just received a scholarship before the start of 2017. And his touchdown celebration, you'll see him if he gets in the end zone again. Makes a motion as if he's reading a book. Well, he's read about 100 books in the last 365 days, according to Bo Baldwin, the offensive coordinator. And his reward to himself yeah. every time he scores a touchdown, he reads a new book. <laughs> So, so many things to say. Oh, the exact opposite of what I would be doing if yeah. I ever scored a touchdown <laughs> would be assigning myself homework. <laughs> but that's Patrick Laird's passion. At about 9 o'clock at night, he wants the lights turned off. He's got books to read. <laughs> ESPN College Football is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And in part by the Lexus High Performance Line. Experience amazing. Well, to say that Ole Miss got an Ole Miss man to take over as head coach would be an understatement. Matt Luke said he has been preparing for this dream job his entire life. You saw a picture of him as an Ole Miss center, 95 through 98. There is his dad. Tommy, who played in the secondary back in the 60s. His brother Tom, who's now an assistant athletic director for player development and hovers right behind his younger brother. He was a quarterback in the late 80s and early 90s. And they keep it going with his nephew, who plays wide receiver as well. So, Yeah, the Lukes may win the battle, dream job. All right, Ed Orgeron down there at LSU says he's got his dream job, and there's others coaching their alma mater. But generationally, not many can compete with that. And as far as a Southern gentleman to meet with yesterday, it just epitomizes, I think, so much of that Ole Miss culture and brands. He is right there on that as well. A bouncing kick down inside the five-yard line to Jones. He's got a lane. Good return out to the 34-yard line. Our first opportunity to say hi to Adnan Burke. Now, Vandy is a tougher team than people realize. Speaking of tough, how about that Clemson defense, Brock? Yeah. Wow. Offense wins a lot of games. Defensive lines win championships. There is no better D-line group in college football. Maybe in the last few years we've seen than that Clemson group. Play of game. Offense, number 20. Five-yard penalty. It remains first down. No recognition of the play clock there for Shea Patterson. That costs them five. Superhuman talent, that's wonderful, but there's no substitute for experience. First two at home, on the road, it's a late night in a place you've never been before, finding the play clock, figuring out a defense, all of the adjustments that go into place that are a whole lot easier when you got more experience under your belt. Play action from a clean pocket, he delivers a strike, in stride, breaking free to Marcus Lodge, to the house, that's an Ole Miss touchdown. Amnesia for Shea Patterson. Tried to squeeze one into a far too tight window that results in a cow score. How about the response? Yeah, Velo, man. That's all they're talking about in baseball. Velo. I want 98. I want a guy that can throw it hard because there's huge advantages. When you've got Velo, you can put on that title belt. You can hit guys in stride, and you're a step ahead of the defense. It's anticipation, that's velocity, and that is, as you said, Bob, responding to a little early adversity with a strike. Jay Patterson came into today tied with Josh Rosen for number one in touchdowns thrown so far this season. This is his tenth and the fourth time this season he has found the speedster, Demarcus Lodge. Last week in the win over UT Martin, DeMarcus Lodge had a career high 133 yards and a touchdown. Well, he's got the belt. 
because he just put 72 and a score on the board the longest play allowed by the Cal defense this season DeMarcus Lodge already with 81 yards total on two catches and a touchdown returnable from the six for Ashton Davis gets to the 21 yard line as we check in with Allison. So Lodge is the uh, first recipient of the night for the nasty wide outs belt kind of a play on that pro wrestling group of the 90s New World Order right well this is like a trend we're seeing in college football this year Boise State you've got the turnover champ belt the U has a turnover chain that they get to wear and rock it's all these defensive teams though right and then Tennessee with the bucket the hunt the ball bucket where they get to dunk the football after they come up with the turnover but Ole Miss they award the offensive guys every time a receiver gets a touchdown in the game they get the belt and they also give it to the best receiver in practice during the week and this week that was DK Metcalf but it's DeMarcus Lodge here early with them. Flag down as Patrick Laird bounces outside with the way that Tennessee game ended today that HTB might stand for hit the bricks. Oof. That was a tough way to lose. On the offense for 61. Freshman guard Valentino Del Toso that gets called for the hold. Yeah, it's tough on those linemen at times when that ball bounces outside. And Del Toso is one of many great stories on this Cal team. You're going to see it right here, and the ball bounces outside, and all he does is continue to reach and grab. A pretty obvious call there. Del Toso was at Oregon. Steve Greatwood comes to Cal. He leaves Oregon, walks on here, and now starting. The Golden Bears. Ross Bowers backed up, swings one to Laird. Lost a couple of yards back inside the 10 yard line. Now it's going to be second down and a mile as Ken Webster came up to make a stop. I think what you're feeling about eight minutes into this game, and, and Justin Wilcox is a guy on that sidelines. It's learning. He's loving his head coaching position, and he's just feeling this game out. Bo Baldwin as well. And you're feeling that speed. The team speed of Ole Miss special teams, two explosive huge plays against his defense. And this defense on the Ole Miss side that flies sideline to sideline so well. They show blitz again, and it's Laird to the 12. A gain of three, so it will be third down and 20. Josiah Coatney on the tackle. Now Ole Miss's whole plan, and defense coordinator Wesley McGriff was awfully fun to sit with yesterday. Their whole plan was to earn the right to rush the passer. Play good defense on first and second down so you could earn the right to rush the passer. But third and 20, I don't think is a time to bring the blitz. They're showing it, and that means 99% they back out. And they do back out, rush only four. So Bowers has time, throws one up the seam, and it's hauled in on third and 20. Conavai Noah, a terrific circus catch out to the 40-yard line. So does he get the belt? Does the Ole Miss run that receiver belt over? Does, did, did they share the wealth? Is that a momentum changer and the quick snap to Laird? Powers his way for about three yards. But how about this strike on third and 20? Reckless and fearless. And as much as I want to brag about Shea Patterson throwing into some tight windows, Ross says I can do the same. In fact, Ross couldn't wait to compete tonight. Doesn't maybe have the speed or the athleticism in a receiving core, but he's got a bunch of selfless guys. A bunch of them have transferred from other places, and they will go over the middle for him. Five-man rush across his body was Ross Bowers. And the crowd on the Cal sideline looking for a flag. And Marcus Gates is all over. Brandon Singleton, no flag comes out. Third down and seven. Yeah, and that, that flag should have come out. And you're going to see Gates here, an old veteran move. But typically, those guys, the back judges, don't miss. Those veterans will do that. And the seniors played a lot of ball, started a lot of games, 40 some games for Ole Miss. He's played. And he gets away with one here, and this that is going a, to be pressure. That was a good no call. That would have been very touchy. Here comes the blitz. Ours, double clutch, incomplete. They're the intended receiver, so it's fourth down and seven. He did it again. Dietrich Bing Dukes was running with Laird. Yeah, now that's back-to-back -back plays. If you have seen a jersey tugged, and you typically get that call. It was over unsportsmanlike conduct. The California head coach, 15-yard penalty. The down counts. Fourth down. So Justin Wilcox obviously believed that there should have been a flag because he picked up 15 yards. That's the first unsportsmanlike conduct foul for the 
California head coach. Well, with shoes, and if you said the first one is, and I would hope, watch the middle linebacker right in the middle here, 43, grab the jersey right there. That's a penalty. Uh, that is absolutely a penalty. <laughs> yes, that's a penalty. The first one may be a sneaky, right? a little you know, tight in space, but Justin Wilcox has every right. That, that just can't be missed. Just leaning on the receiver a bit. That, I agree, should not be a penalty. But the second one, you took the jersey? that's a jersey pull. That's absolutely a penalty. I know that happens fast, but that's the matchup they wanted. A running back on a middle linebacker. A terrific punt from Dylan Klump. Down the sideline, no return possible as it floats out of bounds inside the 30. And actually not quite the field position changer that Cal was hoping for. Out of bounds at the Ole Miss 30-yard line with 5.22 to go in the first. Let's go to Allison. Ole Miss just took A.J. Brown back by the Cal locker rooms, I'm presuming, to get an X-ray. They said he has a knee bruise and is questionable to return. I've been watching him on the sidelines. You can just tell that left leg is really bothering him. He's gone into their injury tent a few times. It seemed initially he told uh, his athletic trainers that he was okay, but it seems to just still be bothering him, so they're going to check him out a little bit more. And we'll see if he can return. That is a home run hitter. Here's a little zone read to Devon Peniman. He's got four yards out to the 34-yard line. Brought down by Raymond Davison. And him in again. He's got four more. Third down and two. Average three yards a carry coming into this game, 111th in college football, some 70 yards a game. It is not what they do. And Phil Longo really doesn't care. All he wants is efficiency. All he wants is his run game to put it into very manageable situations just like this and provide just of enough of a different look for that defense so they can dictate and not allow the other side to do so. Three receivers all to the short side of the field. A quick toss to the short side. That's a first down and then some. Penniman all the way out near midfield. Yeah, that's three consecutive runs, and I didn't see that in the two previous games ever. Ever. And look at the wide splits. That is a tell. When they get in these wide splits, that's a tell for the defense. It's going to be a run. Didn't matter. They executed. Defense didn't. Swing pass to Van Jefferson. Blockers out in front. He's across the 50. Another four yards for Ole Miss. It'll be second down and six. And what complicates those penalties, or the lack thereof, for Justin Wilcox, and why he is so fired up after that, is he knows Ole Miss is going to move this ball, but they need to steal possessions. They need to keep possessions and cannot allow this dynamic offense to get, to get going. Five man rush this time, but Patterson well protected, extends the play. Dangerous in the open field. He'll tuck it under and cruise for another Ole Miss first down. And there's your man's out. Right, for those who want to make that comp, that's what it is. It's the instincts. It's the instincts that they want to teach and to really preach within the game, and that ability to just bounce around and never look flustered. And enough speed to move the sticks. Finding room is Jordan Wilkins, and he spins inside the 35-yard line. Well, I thought what Phil Longo said about Shea Patterson was interesting. So he got here, looked at the A&M game from last season, and after that win, said he thought he relied too much on his athletic ability, that guys that go to the NFL think and throw. They don't want to corral his athletic ability. They want that to be a part of his game, but not something he relies on too heavily, as Wilkins is down to the 30-yard line, so it will be third down and two. You want him to be a great quarterback if he doesn't run, yep. to win from the pocket. And that then becomes an extra weapon, Ice. his mobility, not on the what he relies on is his number one weapon. That's right. And that drives defensive coordinators batting. And you can see a difference from last year to this year with Patterson. He looks like a quarterback. And here he is in the pocket on third down, firing a bullet. That's tipped up, and that might have been picked up on the carom. It is intercepted. Devontae Downs. 
That one's unlucky for Shea Patterson as it went caroming off to Marcus Lodge. And Devontae Downs with his second pick of the season. And this is the right call. Unlike the first interception he threw into a tight window, this is the right decision. Just a bit on the back shoulder. You're counting on your big wide receiver, your big body receiver at 6'2 to block that DB out. He doesn't, and that's the extra effort. That's where Cal doing things defensively this year. If you mentioned Shea's different, Bob, one season to the next, it's Golden Bear defense. Dramatically, dramatically different with Justin Wilcox and Tim DeRuiter. The scheme that they're playing, the takeaways, the understanding, the bigger concept of where everybody is, two crucial, enormous takeaways here in the first round. And speaking of a bigger concept, that's what's in the game now for Cal. And there is that bigger concept. A bowling ball in Vic and Wary, 245 pounds right up the middle. There is a flag down on the near side of the field right at the line of scrimmage. Offside, be finished on the 38. Five-yard penalty, the big first down. That's the senior Haynes wearing the Chucky Mullins number there, the Courage Award, the most productive player on this team, and that is just a pre-snap error. Lining up in the neutral zone, trying to gain that half-step advantage. And seeing the difference maker I saw for three years in Oxford. He's got to play better than he has to begin this season. Only a half a sack and a half a tackle for loss so far this season. Play action. Bowers over the middle. In stride. It's Noah. First down and then some. Out to the 45-yard line. 17 more. Cal goes quick before Ole Miss can get set up. Wide receiver hitch to Vic Wharton, and he weaves his way for six yards. There's some frustration on the part of a couple of those Ole Miss defenders that they're not set at the snap as Cal goes with tempo again. Same formation. Get up and go. Ole Miss trying to communicate, and Wary, two yards shy of the first down. It'll be third down and about a yard and a half. And the previous third yard and a half was a blitz look from Ole Miss that Ross Bowers and Cal diagnosed. Got to the option play. Bo Baldwin there with the with the play sheet is expecting pressure. And that's exactly what Ole Miss said they were going to do. There's an expectation of what is to come here. So how can you get to your best blitz beaters? How can you take advantage of the matchups that you want? Play clock at 11. As Ross Bowers gets his team set for third down and a short two. Here comes the blitz. Bowers slides one through to the tight end, Gavin Reinwald. And the true freshman has a first down reception with a half minute to go in the first quarter. Where the Ole Miss receiver could not use his big frame to shield out that defender. That's exactly what Reinwald does there. Not a target used very often just his third reception of the season they like to distribute and get everybody involved and that was the one on one they wanted they got the pressure they got the blitz just as all the tendencies have shown all the preparation this week here comes the pressure here comes the one on one and there's the reception through contact and that takes us down to the end of what was a pretty exciting first quarter Ole Miss with the field goal lead as we head to the second. A first down, though, for Cal. They are driving one quarter in the books here in Berkeley. Welcome back to college football presented by Geico. Just about set for the start of the second quarter. Ole Miss by three in their second ever trip to California. And the first time they've ever taken on Cal. Or any Pac-12 team for that matter. Vic and Wary. Runs through arm tackles down the sideline. 17 and a first down to the 25. And those numbers you saw pre-snap, those are the notes that Justin Wilcox writes on the sidelines. Those are the critical components. A guy that's been in a lot of different spots as a coordinator. Explosive plays, the penalties, where you are starting your drive. All those hidden yards through all of his years and stops for Justin Wilcox that he's learned that are most valuable that he studies on that sideline. And they're winning the field position battle to this point because of those two turnovers. And Wary looking for room. Ducks under a tackler. Looks like he lost about a half yard. Yeah, those Victor are gonna be, Evans finished him off. Those are going to be some hard yards inside there. Cotney we saw with him play earlier. You got three D tackles for Ole Miss that are legit SEC D tackles that you're used to seeing. There you see Cotney. He's 310 pounds. Perfectly built proportion. 
95 Jones was the top D tackle recruit two years ago. Breland speaks number nine. They rotate in. It is hard yards between the guards against those guys. Play action for Ross Bowers. Long throw to the sideline. Incomplete. Dick Wharton couldn't haul it in. That'll be third down and ten. And that was a dime. That is the only spot that you could put it into Vic Wharton's hands and giving him the opportunity that's tr the transfer from Tennessee. He's going to be the shot guy with Robertson out tonight. In a one-on-one -on -one situation. Good coverage there from Hamilton, but a better throw from Ross. That should have been a big play inside the five. Third down and ten. Ole Miss shows blitz. Rolling the pocket. A throwback screen. Read perfectly. Gavin Reinwald going nowhere on the land sharks. End up making a play. Miles Hartsfield stayed home. And that is all Hartsfield there. Once again, that's the call you want to get to in third and medium. You're expecting pressure. And Ole Miss has been susceptible at times this year in the discipline within their coverage and their fundamentals. But Hartsfield, who played a lot of safety last year, wasn't fooled a bit. Matt Anderson from 46 to try and tie it up. No good. So Ole Miss not only takes over, but takes over with excellent field position at their own 36-yard line. Don't see that much, and I love the encouragement there from the redshirt sophomore Bowers. Well, the ESPN app is a fan's best friend. Stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live at home or on the go. You'll get access to all the scores, news, and highlights all season long. Download the ESPN app to start streaming now. You can't get a better friend on a college football Saturday than the ESPN app. You can get every game going. Play action for Patterson. Steps up in the pocket. Long throw up the seam on a dime. DK Metcalf. Touchdown. Maybe this kid was right. 70 yards and under, I'll put it right where I want to. And Justin Wilcox is looking again at that sheet going, man alive. If there's one I could eliminate, it's these explosive plays, but I can't do anything about it. The team speed for Ole Miss, four deep at that receiving crew, is just running by my corners and safeties. That was a shank on the point after attempt, and it looks like Gary Wunderlich is hurt. A Lou Groza watch list kicker. That'd be a big loss for Ole Miss as they can't convert on the point after. But they've got six on the board courtesy of Shea Patterson to DK Metcalf. to seven. Ole Miss has the lead. Two 70-plus yard touchdown passes for Shea Patterson. He also has two interceptions. So it's been feast or famine for the Ole Miss offense, but with Gary Wunderlich missing the extra point and injured, Luke Logan with a very short kick. Ashton Davis drags tacklers out to about the 29-yard line. Let's go back to Adnan. All right, Adnan, thanks very much. Is that young man as good as UW has had? Uh, yeah, he's the best ever when, when it comes to returner, and he will make a living in the NFL doing that. That is a special skill set that he has. Let's see how Ross Bowers responds with Patrick Laird to his left in the shotgun. And again, look at it. What seems at the initial picture to be an old Miss Blitz. They'll run it right at the heart of the Rebel defense with Laird for a couple. Kadir Shepard made the stop. And watch the plant leg. Of Wonderland. Not sure what it was that he strained, but immediately reached, I guess, for the left hamstring. And he's still trying to work that out over on the sideline as he hit a Bob with shoes and eight iron to the right of the upright. Second down and seven. 
Five-man rush. Bowers stands in the pocket and drops one right down the chimney. Noah hauls it in. And now they'll say incomplete. It looked like Noah had it. A terrific throw from Ross Bowers. But it goes for not third down at seven. Man, but look at the windows. This is why Ole Miss is seemingly bringing five or pressure every time because there is no separation. There is no explosion. And you can see the center field safety C.J. Moore coming, and he's ready to just knock out Noah. Look at the difference in the windows and the separation between Shea Patterson and what he's throwing into and the very tight spots that Ross is trying to fit those throws in down the field. And here comes pressure. And Bowers saw it. Play clock down to zero. Delay of game. Offense number three. Five-yard penalty. Remains third down. So it's great to get to all those checks, and Justin Wilcox knows it, but it's also about some rhythm and timing. See that little note card in his hand, and he's holding it. He's been writing down and looking at it. It's where they're starting those drives. It's the explosives that right now are killing him. Wants to keep the big play in front of him, and he can't. And I know that he's watched so much football through the years, and he's watching the defense that is flying around for Ole Miss at a speed that Cal's having a hard time keeping up with as well. Only a four-man rush on third and 12. Bowers gets out of the pocket, being chased. And there's the guy, Brock, that you were waiting to see show up. Marcus Haynes was able to track down Ross Bowers. And Marquise Haynes has had very few impact plays defensively, but he made one there. Yeah, I don't like calling out college kids. All right, I got a radio show and pro guys. All right, you make it 14 million bucks. I'll hold you accountable. I don't really like to do that, but I said to Wesley McGriff, the D coordinator yesterday, I said, I got to be honest with you. Through two games, I don't recognize that guy. He had an engine and a hair on fire over the last few years that was just dominant. And for the first time, I think this season, I see him back to some of that early, early form in his career. He gets the stop there. Jefferson with the fair catch. Ole Miss has the football and a 16-7 lead in the moment. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Taco Bell and the $5 Steak Quesarito Box and Hyundai. Earthquakes are part of the reality for those that live in Northern California and California Memorial Stadium actually straddles the Hayward Fault. So when they renovated the stadium prior to the 2012 season, they enlisted the help of seismic engineers to make sure it is safe as possible. The stadium actually has four sections here, one in each end zone that are set on seismic blocks. So if something were to happen, those two sections actually separate from the rest of the stadium. That press box where Bob and Brock are so comfortable, well, that can sway up to 12 inches. Now, this year, they put in a new turf, and they put in this different color turf to actually mark exactly where the fault line is so you can see where it runs through the field. This is the thing that really stood out to me, though, yesterday, guys. Take a look here. See this extra rubber pellets and how it's cut out? Yesterday, this was torn up. It's called creep, and the rubber was actually ripped. I thought it was just a coincidence until I talked to Stadium guys. They said that is actually what happens as the plates move. It will tear here. So you can see actual signs of the plates shifting below us. They call it the creep. I call it just straight up creepy. <laughs> Yeah, we were here for practice yesterday afternoon, and I looked down at that zigzag, oddly colored line where you could see Allison in the end zone on the turf. I said, what is this? And one of the guys said, well, if there was an earthquake right now, bad place to stand. I said, what? And then they explained, that is the actual fall <laughs> going through the floor of the stadium. Northern California. Yeah, Bob, so I'm in a bad place, but you guys are actually pretty safe. I was shocked to hear that the stadium in the seats is actually one of the safest places to be if there was an earthquake, which is kind of odd. And Brock, how are you rooting for an earthquake tonight? Like, that's not even right. <laughs> well, that sportsmanlike conduct penalty after the play on Old Miss backs them up. And a short hop throw to Van Jefferson. Although that was the reaction of the Cal defenders, but they'll say that Jefferson scooped it up and picked up some yards out to the 23-yard line. Let's take another look. Got his arms under the football. Good catch, third down. Unless they buzz down, and replay wants to take a look. Going on the field was a completed catch. The previous play is under review. These receivers are pretty good. 
you know, I was chatting with some SEC folks leading up to this game and a lot of conversation that this may be the best receiving core in the country. And you're not even seeing their most dynamic. A.J. Brown got knocked out of this game early with the contusion to his knee. That's just well coached. Van gets his hands underneath it. Let's see if that ball makes impact with the ground or he's able to cradle it without it ever moving. We had a critical play last week, Cincinnati and Michigan. Kind of similar, and it was called incomplete on the field. There was really nothing that they could do to turn it over. And I think in this case, the arms and the body is shielding. One thing I did learn is the replay guys talked to those guys after games. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It's third down. Two things they will look at. Do the black pellets come up? And this is a new field with lots of the rubber pellets. You don't see it. And then if it hits the ground, typically a spiral can change form into a into a duck, you know, and you don't see either of those. And that's confirmed. A good call on the field. And now third and manageable. Third down and seven. And there are those black pellets. Up close and personal. Devon Penniman to the right of Patterson in the shotgun. Patterson fumbles the snap and has to cover it up. Narrowly avoiding what would have been the third Ole Miss turnover. And he ends his tackle. Alex Gibbons both slow to get up. Field goal interception, touchdown interception, touchdown, and a botched snap there in that case. It's been feast or famine for these drives. And a different center there. You saw Javon Patterson on that series slide over in play center. Sean Rawlings, center on the previous possessions. They're fairly interchangeable. But in that case, a snap as you see Patterson's eyes downfield, unable to handle it. Only the third punt of the season for Will Gleason. Rugby style kicker from Australia. Let's go a wobbly one, and that forces a fair catch back at the 39 yard line of Cal for Vic Wart. Good field position for the Bears when we come back to Berkeley. Well, penalties a part of this game on Justin Wilcox's sheet, and this is 15 big yards here. That was 89 Evan Weaver, backup linebacker that came through and committed a very late hit on sportsmanlike conduct, late hit penalty after the play was over. We talked about the good field position a moment ago that Cal had after the Vic Wharton fair catch. Well, while we were away, they lost 15 yards of field position. Yeah, defensive guys like to call those freebies. And they think they can just take a shot on a guy because <laughs> they get hit an awful lot. Nothing free about those 15 critical yards going the other way. So Cal starts this drive inside their own 25-yard line with a handoff to the 245-pound senior, Vic and Wary. Where will the explosives come for Cal? I think that is the question right now. Demetrius Robertson, their fastest player by far, is out. They knew that today, that, that he could not play. Where are their chunk plays? Where's their explosive plays that can come off play action? Taking advantage of one on one situations, been hard to find in this first half. Here comes a blitz from the corner. It's picked up the other way, nearly throwing a pick six. Goes Ross Bowers with the football. Ken Webster read that route and jumped it and almost came up with the ball. Yeah, because right now these old Miss guys in the secondary are flying on slants, on go routes, on hitches, on anything. They are just flying down the field because they don't think anybody for Cal could run by them. There is just not any fear. They're willing to take some risks because they feel athletically they're just playing at a speed and a gear that the Golden Bears don't have. Here it comes. Blitz on third and six. Bowers stands in. Short of the first down and an incompletion. Brandon Singleton couldn't haul it in. It's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. Whether well, it was a third down slant that was knocked down beautifully. Bigger, faster, stronger. You feel like you can just sit. You can feel like you can blitz because you trust your one-on-one -on -one situations. So you're going to come in here, you know, tug in a jersey. You just can't time that any better from Zedrick Woods, the safety right there. Perfectly executed. I think the athleticism a major reason why. A short punt that takes an old Miss hop to their 35-yard line from Dylan Clump. Let's check in with Adnan. That's surprising from a Texas team that started off the season in embarrassing fashion at home, getting rolled by Maryland. 
Here's Jordan Wilkins to the right of Shea Patterson to start off this drive. Good field position, short hopping the snap, and now flags fly as this play's blown dead at the line. Prior to the snap, false start, offense number 67. Five yard penalty remains first down. And again, that's a center change here. That's. And guys, I was told that Sean Rollins could return to the game. He's dealing with a left ankle injury. They taped it really heavily. He's been on and off the bike. I mean, they said it's something he's going to try and play through, but he'll be dealing with it all night. But obviously right now doesn't feel good enough to get in there. That's Javon Patterson who slid over from left guard to center. A little dump off pass in the left flat. And weaving is Ty Quip for a couple of yards. And it may not seem like much, but when you are a offense that doesn't do a lot of things, and you pride yourself on efficiency and just operating so fast when you don't trust your center or that snap or it's right or it's left and it just takes your mind off some of that decision making and finding space it becomes problematic play action for Patterson extending the play escapes a sack throws across his body and a short completion to the 36 yard line as Patterson needs to get his flat tire back. It'll be third down and eight as Ty Quick scooped that one up. Midway through the second quarter, Ole Miss with a 16 to 7 lead. Four man rush. Well protected, side arming one is Patterson. Finds Van Jefferson, breaks a tackle short of the first down. And this is the instinct that Phil Longo is talking about, not the overcoaching. Don't overcoach. Just trust your instinct. How do you got to get the ball out of your hand? What do you got to do to change your arm angle? Three sport athlete. Hey, kids out there that think you want to be a one dimensional quarterback and sit in camps from fifth grade to your senior year, don't. Go play basketball, go play baseball, go play. Get those athletic instincts, a big part of Shea's game, why he was a three time state champion, why he's come in as a freshman last year starting as a, as a sophomore and doing such great things. Athletic composure. Will Gleason to Vic Wharton. Fair catch at the 18. Cal football when we come back. Trailing it home to Ole Miss. Taco Bell is a proud partner of the college football playoff. Be on the lookout for Taco Bell student sections of passionate fans like these at games all season long. A night game here, Pac-12 after dark in Berkeley. And the students are looking for a reason to cheer their offense as Cal trails Ole Miss 16 to 7 without Demetrius Robertson, their most explosive weapon to take the top off the defense. They're leaning on Patrick Laird, a former walk-on at tailback, replacing Trey Watson, who's done for the year. He picks up nine. That's finally some early down success. And if you can't be explosive because your fastest guy isn't there to really threaten, then you got to find some level of run game. Laird's got a first down. And these are the adjustments. That's a pretty veteran staff. Bo Baldwin's former head coach at Eastern for a long time. Tim DeRuiter, the D coordinator for Cal, been a head coach previously at Fresno State. And there's Demetrius who's sitting watching, and they need his speed. And they won't have it. made well before Vic ever even thought about coming out of his break. And that's what you got to do. So two things that you've got to do when a team is faster. You've got to run it, set up your play pass. That's where your shots are going to come from and anticipate. A little wide receiver screen to Wharton. And he hurdles over the tackler for a game of seven. He's a drama major. Pretty, pretty good acting job as you try to try the 15 on the sideline. He's also a dad. 
and expecting another one is Vic, the Tennessee transfer that will be the leading possession receiver for the Golden Bears this season. He's a 22 year old redshirt junior already has a son and his fiance is expecting a daughter. Laird, little misdirection. And looks like he may have dragged a tackler just far enough to get to the first down at midfield. Victor Evans pulled him down. And let's see if they will maybe measure to see if Wharton, or rather, Laird picked up the first down, and now they are going to say without measurement that he picked it up. And that does not look like much, but I am telling you, that is how you then impact and create your, your play-action shots. You can move the chains, and it's three yards here, it's two, it's five. Then you all of a sudden get those safeties a little itchy and those linebackers moving. Already three first downs on this drive. Bowers in some trouble. Throws it away. And pays the price, ends up underneath Victor Evans, and a very late flag is thrown in the secondary. It is an SEC officiating crew. Holding against an eligible receiver, number 15 in the defense. Ten-yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic first down. And Vic Wharton didn't get the last one on the sidelines trying to draw the, the penalty. He gets this one, and you can feel the little tug there. Just a little tug. And if you feel it, do your part. And if you got to overreact a little bit to draw the penalty flag, do so. Now, here comes your area of the field where you could take that shot. And coordinators love between the 40s. You've seen the chains move a little bit. If you've got a play action expecting some single high or man-to-man -man coverage, be your opportunity to get to it. Do they have the speed player without Demetrius Robertson, though, to take that shot with? Questionable. Looks again. There's the slam in stride. First down, Amensa. All the way down to the 24 yard line goes Brandon Singleton. Working on Hartsfield. So here's your motion, clears out the space. If you want to play a space game and get into the open field and green grass, we can do the same, says Cal. Nifty little move there in the formation. Play action again for Bowers. Down the sideline, looking for the end zone. And laying out this Vic Wharton. Yeah, you said to me during break, and I think rightfully so, Bob, you said Ole Miss got three guys that can run by. Anybody in that Cal secondary, Bo Baldwin, without Demetrius Robinson, he's trying. That's a couple shots now to Vic Wharton down the field. Just do not yet have that kind of difference maker in the wide receiver core. You got tough kids, man. You got gutsy kids. And we've seen Noah go over the middle of the field, and, and they will do everything that's asked. It's one thing that Justin said, Wilcox, about this crew that he inherited. They are try hard guys. Laird has a lane to the 18. Patrick Bing Dukes made the tackle. This is, the, here you go. Here's, here's going to be a, a wonderful chess match to watch unfold. Because this down and distance has been blitz every time out, third and five. Blitz, blitz, blitz. So what can you do? What play can you get to? Can you quick snap and try to get a look and get exactly the kind of blitz that you want to go after and attack? Ole Miss not showing blitz. Are they going to bring pressure on third and four? They'll just rush four. So Bowers lobs one, no one home in the end zone. Now it's fourth and four inside the 20 yard line. Gavin Reinwald, I guess, was the intended receiver. And are we going to see the kicking group come out on the field? Offense seems like they're staying on the field. Ross Bowers is looking over. Yeah, and I think this is a decision. This is one of those gray areas. Take a little time. You've got all three timeouts. I think Justin Wilcox is going to make the decision to make this a one score game. Well, he's going to call timeout. The clock has stopped. There's no reason to let the play clock wind all the way down. There he goes. And now he's going to walk down, I think, and spend a timeout. And he'll talk this over. <laughs> Gavin Reinwald, the true freshman tight end, got tied up. Yeah. And I think it's created a little bit of a gray area where he took some time and ultimately I think the right decision an excellent kicker 42 of 51 in his career make this a one score game pay off a drive because you've not had very efficient drives here for a quarter and a half. 
Matt Anderson was a semifinalist for the Broza Award last season, and he knocks it through from 35 here. And it is now again a one-score game. There is a flag down on the play. Well, this is against Ole Miss. This changes everything because it's fourth down and four. This could be a first down going Cal's way. Let's see what the call is. Personal foul, leaping on the defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Well, there's a way to steal a possession. That's the force and effect of a turnover. As now, instead of Cal knocking a field goal through, they'll have a first down in the red zone. What do you think, Brock? <laughs> Point of emphasis protect the kids. They don't want them leaping over the line of scrimmage. Is he leaping over the line of scrimmage, or did he just go vertically straight up and down? It did not appear as if he was leaping over the line of scrimmage, but that was DeMarcus Gates that they got. So now it's a first down inside the 10-yard line. And Vic and Wary gets down to the seven, a gain of a couple. It'll be second down and goal. I have a feeling there's some fans back in Oxford that are looking at each other with the same puzzled look that we just had on our faces. Did yeah. you see a leaping penalty there? I saw a player jump up, which he has every right to do. Not use another player, not jump over the line of scrimmage, not do any of that. But an umpire that had his eyes on it the entire time and was confident in his call, not more confident than any of us are watching that. Play action for Bowers and a rollout. Fires one to the goal line and it's intercepted. C.J. Moore runs it back out to about the 15. So Cal takes three off the board, and then they commit their first turnover as Ross Bowers is picked at the goal line. All three interceptions have been of the same variety for Ross, and I know Justin Wilcox saying, darn it, it's the right call to take the points off the board. But all three for Ross, and here's some of his inexperience. First-year starter, there is nothing here. There is nothing behind it. There's nothing in front of it. He threw two picks, similar nature. When the initial play broke down against North Carolina, trying to make something out of nothing. You love the courage of it. Anytime you get late like that, you have just got to sail it out of bounds. Live to play another day. So the redshirt sophomore turns it over, and the sophomore Shea Patterson back to work to Jordan Wilkins. And he's brought down for a loss of a half yard. And this game unfolding just like we thought, 48-44, <laughs> up and down the field. No, not really. And there's some frustration there from Ross. He knows better than that. The coach's son, that's, that's a no-no, especially after you took the field goal points off that scoreboard. Pump pick. Patterson throws it over the middle and finds Van Jefferson for a first down. Boy, with pressure coming, Shea Patterson, he does maintain composure for a kid that started the final three games his freshman year when Chad Kelly tore his ACL and now takes over as the full-time starter this year. Four-man rush. Out of the pocket goes Patterson. Bumped out of bounds. Flag foot comes out. So that will be a late hit out of bounds on the quarterback on Cal. That will give Ole Miss a first down again. After the play was over, personal foul, defense number one. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, this is the right call. We had a big one of these in the Boise game the other night. Anytime a quarterback is giving himself up and those shoulders are pointing towards that white line, you're given any and every benefit of the doubt. That wasn't even close. And Justin better not argue that one with one personal foul already. He could be out, but that is an absolute no-no. And Devontae Downs, that's a senior. That's your active career tackles leader. The last guy on your defense, the most experienced guy on your defense to make that mistake. The third personal foul on the Bears here in the first half. The linebackers are like you, Bob. 
They just don't like quarterbacks. <laughs> they don't have to work with one every week. <laughs> they get to practice All against start. them. They don't All get to hit them. So then when they get to Five hit them, it doesn't matter if their shoulders are in the white, pointed out of bounds. Yeah, but they don't have to pretend to like a quarterback. <laughs> The way Allison and I get You know what? I was just me. telling my dad that you and I do like one another. Now you're, I know he's listening. Now he's going to think otherwise. He's right. <laughs> Jordan Wilkins to the left of Patterson. Bullets one outside the numbers to the near side to Demarcus Lodge. That's a long throw yep. from the far hash marks from Shea Patterson. You know, we talked about the Johnny Manziel comparisons, and we were watching on film. I said multiple times, that's. The throw Johnny Manziel makes. How often do you see Johnny Manziel when he was in college make a throw like that? Come back all the way across the field, not often. And I'll tell you what I love as much as anything, and anybody that likes quarterback play are his fundamentals. Yeah, he can be creative, but more often than not, he is so fundamentally sound. Blitz coming from the blind side. Trying to get away, and Shea Patterson this time takes a sack back to the 36 yard line. Quickly to add Dan Burke. All right, Bob, thank you. Coming up from the BMW halftime report, absolute thriller right now between Texas and USC, where defense is actually the prevailing theme between the Trojans and the Longhorns. Plus, a shocker in Gainesville as Florida, the stunning finish against Tennessee. And we'll also update you on plenty more Cal, but Mississippi State decisive against LSU. Back to Bob and Brock. Bring it home, fellas. All right, Adnan, thanks very much. The sack for Alex Funches, and then quickly a timeout called by Cal to try and conserve some time for their offense. One of the keys here, as we talked about earlier, is trying to figure out where are those defenders? Where's the fourth guy coming from? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Well, as you can see, that fourth rusher is coming all the way from the back. There is nothing to tell Shea Patterson pre-snap that this guy is going to make this run all the way in, and that's exactly what happens. Not great protection in front of it either, but just changing who that fourth rusher is. Seems like a little thing, not that big of a detail. Shouldn't be that hard to figure out, but it sure is for offensive lines, for young quarterbacks at times. Third and 17, if you're old Miss here, are you staying conservative and simply forcing Cal to use that final timeout? I just asked my quarterback to take care of the football, but never be conservative. Smart, not scared. Four-man rush. Patterson out of the pocket, throws it away, and now Cal won't have to use the timeout. 107 to go, and they'll get the football back, and they'll still have a timeout to yeah. use. Now that's a good point. That is a good point, and that may be a point of emphasis there as you go back and you self-scout and you evaluate how do we handle these end of half and our clock management. And instead of throwing it away, just slide. Or make you that one defender miss and keep that clock running and make Cal burn that timeout instead of having it in their pocket. Will Gleason only punted twice the first two weeks of the season. This is his third punt here in the first half. Of course, Cal, a different kind of opponent in South Alabama and UT Martin. Wharton lets it bounce. And it rolls along the sideline. He gets knocked down. And it's out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Week two, Monday Night Football. Matthew Stafford and the Lions taking on Eli and the Giants. A proud tradition of some quarterbacks with Archie and Eli throwing the rock. Empty backfield. Ross Bowers, four-man rush, steps up, throws one down the sideline through the hands of Horton. It'll be second down and ten. Lots of hand fighting going down the field. We've seen a few that we thought should have been called with reaches and tugs. That's that's clean. Let him play. DB wants to feel where that receiver's at. Webster, Big Wharton's going to fight that arm off. They're going to hand fight clean. Ole Miss wasn't sure Ken Webster would be able to get back to cornerback after he tore his ACL in the opener last year against Florida State. Bowers buying time and forced to check it down underneath. Good downfield coverage by Ole Miss. 44 seconds to go this is in the half. And here is a situation yeah. for Ole Miss with their timeouts where they could put Cal in a hole. Yep. They could get the ball back with good field position and maybe have a chance to get in field goal range themselves. It's like screen or draw. And again, just the speed, the overwhelming speed of this Rebel defense. It is playing so hard and fast for Matt Luke, and you can see it. 
That's exactly what he's telling the side judge here. We get a stop. I want a timeout. We'll be in your ear. Bowers to the sideline. Toe tapping at the 31 yard line. And it is good for a first down to Brandon Singleton. What a terrific throw from Ross Bowers. Speaking of arm strength, from hash mark to as far as you can throw an 18 yard comeback. May not have quite the RPMs and the velocity, but the level of anticipation, that's his greatest asset. Put it out there before he breaks. Perfect pitch and catch. Bowers into double coverage. Incomplete. That ball hit the ground. Corner by Noah tried to haul it in. It'll be second down and 10 with 30 seconds to go in the half. C.J. Moore was there to hamper Noah. But look at the coverage. Look at the space that Ross, that's the right call, that's incomplete, is trying to throw that into. It should be so telling to you. It is from the press box that we're sitting up here. You just see a rebel defender that's just matched stride for stride and step for step on nearly all of these routes. That is not a friendly position to be in as a quarterback. You want space. You want separation. And Ross is getting very little of it and having to make picture-perfect throws to find completions. They clock down to two. They get the snap off. And Bowers fires one high, bobbled and caught. Out to midfield. Jordan Vesey. That was a terrific catch. And now with 22 seconds to go, end the timeout. A chance maybe for Cal to get in the field goal range. As conserving some time as Bowers spends the down here, spikes it with 17 seconds to go in the half. I mean, Florida only needed nine seconds. <laughs> But I have a hunch Ole Miss safety is going to try to keep everything in front of him a whole lot better than that Tennessee safety did. And here's the clock management coming into play here. Justin Wilcox saw Matt Luke on the other side. First time head coaches working those officials, letting them know, here's my plan. I want to be a step ahead. So you're not looking for me. I'm going to be right there letting you know what our plan is. And after the spike, what took so long for the play clock to start? The play clock sat on 40 for a good 10 or 12 seconds, giving Cal some extra time to communicate a play in from the sideline. Now it's only at 18. They're ready to go. Bowers with a pump fake. Under pressure. Down he goes. Breland speaks. Gets the sack. And a quick timeout call by the Bears with 11 seconds to go in the half. First sack of the season for Breland Speaks. When Ross sees these coverage in years to come, this is what we call two-man. You'll see it in my clicker here. Everybody else is man-to-man. -man. Look at the level of green grass. If he recognizes this coverage and finds a lane to run, find a lane to run right now. Look at the opportunity. All these DBs' backs are turned. Look at the space here if Ross can go. He's going to run for 25 yards. But if you hold that ball against that coverage, too long. There's nowhere to go, and you're going to get sacked. Should there not be a recognition on the part of one of his receivers to break off and maybe run an option route of some sort towards that green grass? They, they're not that kind of offense. Ole Miss is. Ole Miss gives their receivers that kind of freedom and liberty. That's not necessarily in the plan, so you don't just break off your route. That is really on the quarterback to see it. And he's nifty enough, and he will. And, and, and that Mark Striasopo, his QB coach, will say, when you see this two-man coverage and it's covered and everybody's back's turned, use your athleticism and your legs. Don't sit in there and be a sitting duck against that coverage. Against a team that leaves that kind of void at yep. times in their defense, you wonder if you might want to put that in the game plan, give your wide receivers a little bit of freedom. Third down, under pressure, is back to the sideline. Incomplete. Now three seconds to go in the half, but it's fourth down, so Ross Bowers can certainly reach the end zone from midfield. I guess with one more snap, why not throw it as far as you can? Well, unless they're going to send the punt group out and end the first half. They will start the third quarter with the football. And it looks like, no, now Justin Wilcox has called the punt group back to the sideline. He's going to leave his offense out there. You better hustle. One, more play. And one concerning thing here is you can take a vicious hit as a quarterback if you're not careful, thinking you're going to run around with these D linemen chasing you. They'll rush four. Powers by his time. He'll throw it as far as he can. He takes that hit. This ball will reach the end zone, and it'll be intercepted, and that will end the half. C.J. Moore gets the pick. Cal will receive the third quarter kickoff, but they trail. 
16 to 7 at halftime. Time for the halftime report. Back to the studio. Welcome back to college football, presented by Geico. You're watching the Pac-12 on ESPN. Just about set for the start of the third quarter here by the Bay. Ole Miss on the road. First time they've played a Pac-12 team, and they're handling the road trip quite well. The Rebels have a 16-7 lead over Cal. Calvo set to start the third quarter with the football, looking for some answers on offense. Bob Schusen here with Brock Ewart. Allison Williams down on the field, and Brock had a chance to do something pretty cool at halftime. We're going to show you that in a moment. Ashton Davis from the goal line. Out to the 25 gets stood up at about the 28-yard line. So just as we went to the halftime break, Brock Ewart, he went down to that Cal locker room. And he was behind closed doors with the Cal <laughs> coaching staff and hustled all the way back up to the booth here. A, pretty cool to be in that locker room. That, and B, well, what'd you find out? That brought me back. <laughs> that brought me back to a lot of years in locker rooms. That was calm, as I expected it to be. All the position coaches with their individual groups Bob Baldwin, offensive coordinator, not with the quarterbacks. He was with his running backs and a pretty constant message of stay, stick to it. We're going to wear these guys down, going to force them into more mistakes. They already got two picks, and they have been there before. Right? They were there week one. They overcame adversity against North Carolina, and they're going to stick to this run game. Laird picks up a first down. And I'll tell you what really stood out was that kid right there. Former walk-on, the well-read guy, he was the one talking to Bo Baldwin. Hey, we can do this. I'm feeling the safety. You know, it just so stands out when you get smart players. And they got a bunch of them here at Cal that aren't just like, well, what are we going to run next? No, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm seeing. This is what I'm reacting to. And this is what we can get to to win. Bowers to the sideline. And the catch is made just shy of midfield by Brandon Singleton. So... They don't have a lot of experiences together. Just a couple games under their belts, but they do have one where they overcame adversity in North Carolina. And that was probably the last most consistent message felt in that locker room. This time Laird caught behind the line. And that's the second time we have seen Marquise Haynes make a tackle for loss tonight. He came into tonight with only one half of a tackle for loss through the first two games for Ole Miss. Now he's got two in this game. That was on my guy 99, too, Malik McMorris. Bo Baldwin said nobody has gotten by, nobody has beat this season through spring ball in the first two weeks. And the quickness there, getting by the 300-pound little fullback and the tackle for loss. Ole Miss played fast, played a little reckless offensively, a couple critical turnovers, but that was, I bet in their locker room, a consistent theme. They rush five, right at the first down marker, reaching for a first down. His corner by Noah. That's a big third down conversion. If you're Cal and you want a tone setter to start off the third quarter, try to get a score, make it a one score game and get back in the game, you need a third down conversion there. They got it, and now an easy pitch and catch is missed by Ross Bowers. He had Noah wide open. Yeah, that third down, that could be a little adjustment to watch here in the second half, right? We've seen so much pressure on third down side again, so what do you do? Get to empty. If you can't take shots and get those chunk plays, then Bo Baldwin says, get into empty, simplify those blitzes a little bit, make it a little bit easier on the quarterback. We had some good, bad, and ugly in that first half. Keeper, Bowers, great fake, slides safely for a gain of nine to the 40. And I saw my old quarterback buddy, Marcus Tuiasasopo, who coaches Ross, and I told him, hey, there before halftime, some opportunity to run in that second half, and he was on it before I could even finish it. Laird met behind the line. The blitz came, and there were not enough bears to block for Patrick Laird as Victor Evans tackles him for a loss of about two and a half, maybe three. So now it's third down. Or check that fourth down. And about three and a half. This could be a little empty, a little freeze play. Here's your quads, your four guys to the top of the field. Try to get to the matchup you want. They're going to try and keep the drive alive and go for it on fourth down. A rollout for Bowers. He's got Noah. First and ten Bears at the Ole Miss 36. It's the first time we have seen that formation. You don't see it a lot in college football. Four men to the field. It helps you spread the 160 feet sideline to sideline. And a certain adjustment at halftime is get Noah the ball, your best possession receiver involved. 
play action. Bowers looking downfield. Pump fake, and he will throw that one away. He had Vic Wharton down the sideline on a double move that Old Miss did not bite on with Dietrich Bing Dukes bringing pressure, but good discipline from C.J. Moore, the safety. He stayed where he was supposed to stay. That's exactly right. Down at about the 10-yard line. <laughs> Tunnel screen. Vic Wharton. Blockers to the 22. It's more success out of empty. More confusion there from Ole Miss. You get into empty. That's one of those halftime adjustments. To try to simplify the picture a little bit. Slow down a defense that was just on their toes downhill in that first half. Reaching back to try to make the catch was Jordan Duncan and couldn't haul it in. That's just the consistency for Ross. Ross said, hey, I'm trying to slow you down with that throw a little bit. Yeah, they trailed in both games. A bit of adversity they've overcome before. And those are the little details for Ross, making just his third start. It's not just the third down conversions and those plays you need to make. A simple pitch and catch on the earlier downs makes that down and distance much easier. Laird. Inside the 20 yard line to the 19 where it will be third down and seven. Well, not only did they trail North Carolina and Weber State at halftime in both games, they trailed by three in the fourth quarter of both of those games. So if Cal can get this to a one score game, that's right in their wheelhouse so far this season. But another big play here, third down and seven. Feels like these running backs got to get involved. As tight as that coverage has been, is there an opportunity to get these running backs involved? That's unwary on a sprint down. All out blitz coming from Ole Miss. Wharton in the end zone, runs under it for the Cal touchdown. Bowers beat the blitz. And did he take a shot? Did he ever? We call that a casino blitz, man. That defense, and Wesley McGriff on the other side is rolling the dice. It is all out pressure. There is no safety deep. In fact, there is a bust by Ole Miss. And not only bust the jaw there of Ross Bowers with a tremendous hit, there was nobody covering the back out of the backfield and obviously no safety help for Vic Wharton. A chunk play going the other way this time in the column of the Golden Bears. And we saw Ross how many times take those shots against North Carolina. It's stand in, it's stand in, it's stand in and deliver. That's big time coming out of the second half gates. Anderson makes it a two-point game. 11-16 to go in the third. Cal with a touchdown to start off the third quarter. Ross Bowers took a shot, but Vic Wharton on the receiving end. Ross Bowers has a cut underneath his chin. The reason why? He got hit by Dante Evans on that all-out blitz, and Rock, this should have been targeting. Absolutely. Crown of the helmet. Crown right of the helmet. under the chin. And Justin Wilcox was trying to make that exact case to the officials. Read the lips. That's targeting. And he was right. Dante Evans is lucky to still be in the game. And Ross Bowers is lucky to still have all his teeth. Kalen Jones from the goal line. Tripped over his own man to the 28-yard line. Allison? Well, guys, a couple of injury updates first for Ole Miss. Their leading receiver, A.J. Brown, will not return to the game, nor will their kicker, Gary Wunderlich. So a couple of things to keep an eye on here in a close game in the second half. As for my conversation with Ole Miss head coach Matt Luke, he felt like offensively they need to do a better job of staying on schedule. Some penalties hurt them on first down. Now, I know he's probably not too thrilled with his defense at this exact moment, but he felt like they played really well in that first half, did a good job of forcing Cal into some third and longs and earning the right to rush the passer which is something they talked about coming into this game. Well, Ole Miss will start here inside their own 30 yard line with a run to Devon Penniman and he goes right up the middle into the secondary a flag thrown late he's out to the 43 yard line if the play stands. They'll bring it back. Holding on the offense, number 76, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot, big first down. 
Yeah, and this line's been moving around a little bit. We talked about Rawlings being out. This is the left guard now. That's typically Patterson, but he slid to center. That's now Durante Bolden. You can see the inside penetration there by Looney, the best defender for Cal. You get that inside initial penetration. You're left reaching and grabbing. And the referee is going to grab for his penalty flag and put it down on the ground. Patterson gets out of the pocket. And is brought down at the 22. And a late flag is thrown. After the play was over, official foul, defense number one. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. That is four 15 yard penalties against Cal. This one on Devontae Downs for a late hit on the quarterback after he was down. Not vicious. Not vicious, but that's the second time. Downs was the one that hit Patterson out of bounds earlier when he was clearly in the white. That time he is clearly down. You have got to do your best to lay off the quarterback. Doesn't matter what level it is. That's the second time Devontae Downs has committed a 15-yard foul. And Jefferson breaks a tackle. Speed down the sideline. Yeah, Derek Carr. That's the other comp. A more athletic Derek Carr because when it comes to the quickness of the release when Derek Carr was at Fresno State it never got talked about enough those little bubble screens and smoke screens how quickly he gets the ball out to his playmakers blitz off the edge avoiding the rush as Patterson with a little duck with the right shoulder boy that was as smooth and composed as could be a corner blitz that wasn't picked up he just doesn't flinch he threw doesn't. it away so lives to fight another day, but does not take the big negative play. Nope, eyes are downfield the whole time. And you see the yardage off the charts once again. A couple more touchdowns, a couple interceptions, one not on him. He doesn't have the short release like Derek Carr, but when it comes to the velocity and just the ball getting from point A to B in a hurry, why the catch and run is so available for Ole Miss. Look at that. Another quick hitter. I mean, look at that. You take nine average college quarterbacks Bob and that ball has got a little float on it and it gets to the receiver and it's a collision with the DB boom all the way across the field when you just throw 98 and not 92 or 88 as far as baseball fastballs it just gets on the receiver quicker and it just allows them to do the kind of damage they have been doing tonight and all season third down and two false start it'll be third and seven that's a big penalty for Ole Miss Ball start, offense number 73, five yard penalty, third down. Well, this is just what happens when a new center comes in. You can see it, Javon Patterson's one of the favorites. Man, Luke pointed to him, every offensive staff member pointed to him, the highest character guy, just a tremendous guy, willing to do whatever it takes. Started every game last year at guard. But now he's having to slide over with the injury to Sean Rawlings, and it shows how critical that piece is in a tempo gun system. Could have it. It's got to be, it's got to be with ease and efficiency, and it's just not right now. Play clock down to seven. Play clock at two. It goes to zero. Did a timeout get called? It did from the sideline by Matt Luke. Circle that. In a close game, circle that moment right now. Five minutes into the third quarter, it will come into play inevitably late. So a timeout used here by Ole Miss to avoid third down and 12. Big third down when we come back. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Axe. Find your magic. And Jaguar, the art of performance. Well, just to show that Matt Luke wanted his team lose for tonight's game, they all went down to the pier in San Francisco to have a fun afternoon to try and let some of that tension out well all that tension might be back Bob shoes and Brock Ewart Allison Williams here in Berkeley after the timeout third down and seven in a two-point game Patterson lobs it down the sideline man for man coverage DK Metcalf couldn't haul it in over Jalen Hawkins
That's a better job of doing the best he can. Josh Drayden there trying to stay on top. That's some of the messaging as well for those corners. You saw Marlashawn Franklin early give it up deep, and you could see Longo there. And that encouragement is don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. And if it's not there and it's tight, trust your instincts on third down to find the next level of your progression. Did that look like encouragement? Yes. <laughs> it did? <laughs> In a fatherly kind of way. Yes, in a tough love kind of <laughs> yes. way. That punt sails in the end zone from Gleason. That'll come out to the 20-yard line for Cal. Well, next Saturday on ABC, we'll have a Big Ten battle. Saquon Barkley, number five Penn State at Iowa at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Also streaming live, as all our games are, on the ESPN app. And pretty good numbers from the Heisman hopeful to start off the season. He's only averaging 9.3 per carry. So strong in a three down back. And that's why he will be a first round pick because he loves to catch it. He loves to pass block and as much as he loves to run. Hard to find. Dick and wary. Out to the 25. Wear him down. Again, just some of the messaging, some of the theme of a very calm halftime and locker room as a feeling, and, and where he is the big back. Laird is kind of the do-everything. They're without their most dynamic back now for the season. That's Trey Watson. But a feeling like they were going to make the mistake, and you continue to stick to the run. That screen is met. Boy, was that read nicely by A.J. Moore. He saw that one coming from a mile away. And blew up corner by Noah. And yeah, Noah's taking some shots today. Seam route in center field. Free safety's coming over. That time the nickel back, you're right. He's seen that concept about a thousand times through spring ball and into training camp. Some Ole Miss likes to employ that little bubble screen as well. And Noah's like, hey, man, <laughs> I'm tough, but I'm taking a beating. Well, C.J. Moore and A.J. Moore, twin brothers in that secondary for Ole Miss, making plays tonight. Slant, that's up in the air and incomplete. Jordan VC couldn't haul it in, and now it's fourth and five. It's a three and out for Cal after they get the football back looking to take the lead. And empty. there is A.J. Moore. All three times you have seen empty, and you get to empty to simplify. Okay, you're going to bring one more than I can block. That's fine. I'm going to get to the matchup that I want. Everything you want is here. Everything you want is here. The green grass, look at, again, all this voided space, the opportunity. If you throw a catch and run, and instead it's high and wide. Really nice punt from Dylan Club at the 23 yard line. A fair, fair catch for Van Jefferson. Ole Miss clinging to a two point lead here in Berkeley. Extra yard for Teachers Week is a week long celebration of teachers led by the College Football Playoff Foundation through its Extra Yard for Teachers platform. Visit the College Football Playoff Foundation website at cfp-foundation.org to learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers Week and see how you can get involved. And that $11,000 check presented to Acorn Woodland Elementary right down the road in Oakland. A quick hitter is there for DK Metcalf. That school was vandalized twice during the summertime. Graffiti, broken technology, and damages to the library. So repairs and additional opportunities to help students grow and foster positive learning Opportunities helped out by our efforts tonight as Josh Drayden is shaken up on that last play. That's awesome. You know what else is awesome is some of the scheme that Tim DeRuiter and Cal have thrown. Talk about blurring that picture up a little bit. And Phil Longo can yell at his quarterback or teach and encourage in a loving way. But he's doing so because the picture has changed quite a bit. And where that fourth defender is coming from, where those blitzes are coming from, you've seen two quarterbacks tonight. It's been awesome to watch. It's been a real chess match of blitz and pressure and for them to try to analyze pre-snap and post-snap. If I've said it once, it's 100 times. There's no substitute for experience. So for Cal, you want to rush four, but make it look like more. Yes. And when you're doing that, so you're now Shea Patterson, are you seeing any tell in that Cal defense as to where that extra guy might be coming from, who might be dropping, what four you're eventually hard, going to see coming out. Hard after you. to do that. Hard to do that. Eli and Peyton would love to do that and have a system where they can check it all. This is a system that is just react and go. This time a five-man rush is countered by a run to the near side. 
to Jordan Wilkins, and he's brought down just shy of the 40-yard line. And it was kind of cool talking to Phil Longo down on the sidelines. Came from Sam Houston State, prolific offensively. And he just said, yeah, we're not into all those checks and all of that. I, I want instinct. Progress. And that conversation he had with Shea after that last incompletion, get to the next guy. If it is not there and clean, trust yourself. Trust your gun of an arm and the instincts to create. Play action. Patterson's got man-to-man -man coverage to Metcalf. Off his fingertips and incomplete. DK Metcalf had a step on the true freshman, Elijah Hicks, and it looked like a pretty good throw. There is a flag down in the offensive backfield. Wow. Chop block, offense number 22 and number 79 in a high-low combination. 15-yard penalty, defeat second down. And this is dangerous. And, and this is why it is a 15-yard penalty. It is coming right at you, right in the middle. Watch the running back here. Javon Patterson, the center, is engaged there with the rusher. At the time, it was Raymond Davison, the middle linebacker. The running back tries to come in, but when that lineman is engaged and you high-low, that is such a dangerous play on a pass rusher and a critical 15-yard penalty going the other way. Second down and 21. And now a false start. It'll be second down and 26. False start. Offense number 76. Five-yard penalty. Remain second down. And the former center right there, and the offensive line coach turned interim coordinator. He knows. He knows that sometimes the most irreplaceable guy can be that center, that security blanket for a quarterback, the comfort of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of reps. They're going to try and set up third down and manageable, and they will just about do it with Wilkins going up the middle. But Brock, that is 12 penalties now against Ole Miss, and five of the 12 false starts. Self-inflicted pre-snap. You go on the road against a quality opponent, it's come back to bite you. Third down and 15. Four-man rush for Cal. Check that three-man rush. They drop a man off the line. Tipped ball. Dangerous. Van Jefferson had it go through his hands. So once again, it will be Will Gleason to punt. How about this Cal defense? I watched him in this window last year. Bob, like a lot of these fun and gun systems, right, that a year ago in the Big 12 or here at Cal or at Oregon wouldn't play defense, couldn't play defense, couldn't tackle. I mean, this was as poor as a group defensively in their effort, in their pursuit, in their tackling. And they're on point tonight, slowing down one of the most prolific offenses the first two weeks in college football. Fair catch called for and made by Wharton at his own 28. Let's take a look at tonight's hardest working player brought to you by Duluth. Marquise Haynes, he has been in his career at Old Miss a sack machine. He wears the Chucky Mullins Courage Award number, number 38, in honor of the former Old Miss defensive back who was paralyzed back in the homecoming game in 1989 and then passed away two years later. And it's always an honor to wear that 38 for players in years previous. And he's trying to pursue down the line after Patrick Laird. Laird gets free. He's into the secondary with a first down. And boy, he had his knee bent back. Boy, look at him jump right up. The crowd groaned as if they thought that Laird was injured on that play, and he jumps right back into the offensive backfield. Boy, to have the flexibility of a 20-year-old. There he goes again. And this time swapped under at the 40-yard line for a loss of a yard and a half. Ouch. Although he wasn't hurt, he popped nope. right up. Amazing. Tough. Self-made former walk-on. He's earned everything here and is going to have an ample opportunity this season with the injury to Watson. And here's that empty look again. Slow down that rush. Simplify the coverage. Play pitch and catch. There's the pitch and catch. Noah breaks a tackle. Nearly broke a tackle. 
comes up five yards short of the first down. C.J. Moore held on for dear life. And here comes what's been 80% pressure on third down. What cut the chin earlier on the touchdown pass, what's battered him throughout this game. It has been blitz, blitz, blitz. A little more difficult to do when you spread and you empty the backfield. Ole Miss showing that typically means they're bailing. They rush four. Quick hitter, Laird, breaks a tackle. Inside the 35. He had no scholarship offers out of high school. He became a preferred invited walk-on at Cal and was just put on scholarship as a red shirt junior to start this season. And he's the workhorse to the 30 yard line for two and a half. We are almost two to one number of plays. Almost two to one. Ole Miss has hit a couple big plays, huge explosive plays for touchdowns, but look at hands on hips. You're nearing 70 plays now for Cal. And we're not even into the fourth quarter yet. Look at that. That was why there was a sentiment that you could wear them down if you could continue to possess the ball. Now it's Vic and Wary. Flag down. He's close to a first down if the play stands. I have to check the marker. That may be against Ole Miss. And Breland speaks, big number nine in the middle, getting a little frustrated with all those snaps. May have got the hands up into the headgear of the center, Addison Holmes. Personal foul, hands to the face, defense in the right center. Yeah, it wasn't number 97. It's Breland right there. I mean, take a look at that. That's frustration. That's being on the field an awful lot. And these are these catastrophic penalties now. Not only the pre-snap variety, chop blocks, personal fouls, hands to the face, 15 here, all those hidden yards. If you may be faster in spots, in a lot of spots, but if you make those mistakes out on the road, it is hard to play winning football. And Wary to the five. Down to about the three and a half yard line before he's brought down by Kadir Shepard. Comes the tempo. They'll mark him down at the four. Cal can get a first down inside the one. And Wary to about the two yard line, and this brings up an enormous play. Third down and one near the two yard line with under four minutes to go in the third quarter. Can Ole Miss? Get a red zone stop and force a field goal. That was such a good play by Josiah Coatney. Third leading tackler on this defense is a defensive tackle, number 40, right there. The most pleasant surprise in the early part of this season. And he and his buddies next to him up front, 95, Benito Jones, can they get off their blocks and stop that run? And Wary into the heart of the Ole Miss defense, and it looks like they have him stopped. Now what do you do if you're Justin Wilcox? Fourth down and less than a yard to go. Kick it. If you kick take the, the field goal, you take the lead. You take the lead. You, why would you give an opponent any momentum in a game here? You came out and responded in the second half. How do we handle adversity? Well, you handle it by going down the field and scoring a touchdown, and you handle it here by taking the lead. Although that Ole Miss defense comes back to the sideline feeling pretty good about themselves in spite of the fact they, by virtue of penalty, and a few give up plays, Cal got inside the five yard line, but they manage only three on the chip shot field goal. So both teams, in a sense, come off the field to their respective sidelines yep. feeling good about what just happened. So it's a one-point lead for Cal. Now, what the difference is right now? Well, unfortunately for Ole Miss, some bad luck as Gary Wunderlich, a terrific senior kicker, third in school history with 285 points coming into tonight. He strained his hamstring on an extra point attempt earlier in the game. So now not only is that a point off the board for Ole Miss and the reason they're behind now, Luke Logan takes over as the place kicker. He's a redshirt freshman. And boy, can't you see it coming yeah. down at yeah. some point to a, a young man that has never attempted a field goal before. And now, very, very possible that at some point Luke Logan will be called upon in a pressure spot. 
All that film we watched yesterday, as you can see Logan getting a little work in at halftime. All the film we watched with shoes and right? all these fun blitzes, all these answers, all of it. How many times did we talk about the kicker? <laughs> Zero. Even the center. How many times talked about the center and the execution and the snap and the timing? That would be zero. And those are two of the more substantial factors tonight. What's been a very evenly played, well played, hard played game here. Layden Berkeley. Jones bobbles it, picks it up. And now gets stood up at the 17. Kick off your week two NFL Sunday on ESPN. Sunday NFL countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern. Rex Ryan joins Charles Woodson, Matt Hasselback, Randy Moss, Mort Shefty, and our new host, Samantha Ponder. They'll have all the early breaking stories, injury updates, they'll preview each game, take you right up to kickoff. Sunday NFL countdown, streaming live tomorrow morning on the ESPN app. So, Shay, how do you handle a little adversity? After that 75-yard bomb for the touchdown, five punts for an Ole Miss team that had two punts in their first two games. Swing pass. Now to the 24-yard line. Well-executed play, about nine yards to Van Jefferson. Allison? This guy's Ole Miss's offensive coordinator, Phil Longo, very honest with us yesterday, right? Like, we only have about 28 plays that we run out of a couple different formations, not real complex. And that's kind of what the Cal defense has been talking about on their sideline. The defenders telling each other, guys, they're running the same thing over and over. We can stop them. Well, that's simplicity. We did talk about that, as that was only a seven-yard gain on first down. Stumbling. Oh, the turf monster got Shea Patterson a yard and a half shy of the first down, so now it will be third down and short. It is a somewhat simplistic offense that's well executed by Ole Miss. They have a lot of variations, though. Yep. Rock, don't they out of that base? They do, and I, we haven't mentioned the loss of A.J. Brown. Best receiver on this team, the security blanket, the guy in space that Shea trusts, been out since the beginning of the first quarter. Third down and two. Wilkins runs through a tackle, just barely getting to the first down marker. Devontae Downs couldn't bring him down, and that will be good enough for an Ole Miss first down. That's a big run from Jordan Wilkins. Be your own blocker. One-on-one, -on -one, man. All the drills that you do, all the technique, the fundamentals, these kids don't hit near as much as they used to. But that still comes down to one-on-one, -on -one, you're meeting in the hole, and who is going to win that situation? Wilkins again. There's a young man that missed all of last season, an academic credits snafu that left him ineligible. There was a time he was wondering if his Ole Miss career was in jeopardy, and now he is back this season after a 400-yard season or so as a sophomore back in 2015. Play action. Jay Patterson wide open as Wilkins. One-handed catch. What should have been an easy pitch and catch. Shea Patterson to Jordan Wilkins became an adventure, and Wilkins hauled it in for a first down. So a little adversity comes, and it's not necessarily the sophomore quarterback, but it's the senior running back who responds with the third one conversion and a tremendous one-handed catch in space. Across the 50-yard line. And that catch is made by Jefferson. But nothing's easy, right? That first half, almost 300 yards passing, all this green grass, here's a bomb, there's a bomb. Everywhere is a shot down the field, and you felt here on these last four or five possessions, you gotta go out and earn it. Gotta go out and just take what they're, be willing to take what the defense is willing to give you. Quarterback draw. Patterson with a pump fake. Cut down. Gained a half yard. On what might be the final play of the third quarter, it is a big third down that will open up the fourth quarter if Ole Miss does not opt to snap the ball, and they will not. What a great game, huh? What a great game. What a great test of X's and O's, but more importantly, what a tremendous test of guts. Two first-time head coaches, one in interim, one building this program, and they're going to learn an awful lot about their kids in the next 15 minutes. Third down and five for Ole Miss to start off the fourth quarter. They have been successful on third and short. They have not been successful once it gets to third. And four plus over seven. Bob Shoes and Brock Ewart. Allison Williams here at Berkeley. Big third down to begin the fourth quarter in a one-point game. 
Blitz coming. Patterson beats it on time. Markel Pack, his first catch, and it's a big one to the 37-yard line of Cal. I'm trying to remember, which who's in, which quarterback did we just enjoy watching throw? As much as we have enjoyed this kid on tape and tonight. This time a four-man rush. Extending the play. He's got room to run if he wants it. He will take it. Patterson out of bounds. Inside the 30 at the 29-yard line. And you add that mobility, that scrambling entertainment value to his game. And you can see most passing yards through three games in the SEC since 2005. How about 2017's Old Miss team? Right now is vaulted ahead of everyone. Because of Shea Patterson. Little zone read. Nice cutback by Wilkins. You ever get down? I know you're a baseball guy. You ever just get down and watch relievers warm up? Mariners have a, have a flamethrower. Edwin Diaz throws 100 miles an hour. And you just watch him and you listen to the ball hit the mitt. And it is just fun. Right? People said that about Pedro. Just watching him warm up in a bullpen. And to just watch a tremendous thrower, whether it's a baseball or in this case a football, it's not a finished product. And there's a lot of work to do, a lot of recognition. Saw Longo, he's going to continue to be hard on him, the coordinator, to develop the full aspect from the neck up. I'm just trying to think of how many guys we've enjoyed watching simply throw the football all over the field, the amount of command and just power that he has in his arm. I mean, this is 55 thrown into a cereal box. This is a rocket shot, not thrown to a receiver, but to space, so there could be some catch and run. And then one more time. And that, that, that scares defensive coordinators. Right, they're going to watch this tape, and man alive, he, he can really spin it all over the field. Play action here. Extending the play is Shea Patterson. Throws it away. Now, you were the first that I can remember last season after we had looked at some tape and we watched Texas Tech. Mahomes. And you said, That's Patrick it. Mahomes. Yep. No one's talking about this kid. You watch what happens as the offseason goes through, the combine and the athletic testing and the film gets watched. What happens? And all of a sudden, the Chiefs are trading up for him in the first round. Now, Patterson's only a sophomore, so he has more college football to play. Do you see an NFL future for Shea Patterson? That's, that, that is the, thank you for reminding me. That is the comparison when it just comes to the ability to throw the ball. And here he goes again. Buying more time. Checks it down. Well done by the Cal defense. Jordan Wilkins, he's got nowhere to go. Pursuit from Raymond Davison. I'll tell you one, one thing that's really cool too, Bob, is defensively, as much as Shea's gonna scramble, they call it plaster. Finding a way to plaster, right? And when, when he breaks contain, or get on a guy, find your guy, stay on your guy. Everybody is in coverage here. Everybody is plastered up. So well done defensively. Now what does Ole Miss call, and maybe how much real estate can they buy a redshirt freshman kicker on third and 15, or do they take a shot down the field? Under pressure is Patterson. Throws it away. He was outside the pocket. Did he get the ball back to the line of scrimmage? The officials right now are having a conference to see if this may be intentional grounding. And if it is... For grounding, the pass was out of bounds. Touched the coach and prevented him from crossing the expanded neutral zone. Down. Well, there it is. It touched a coach, and they are going to say that that pass would have gotten where it needed to go to avoid intentional grounding. So now, here comes Luke Logan to try and give Ole Miss the lead. A redshirt freshman. This is his first career attempt. From 48, no problem. <laughs> uh, he did make kicks of 54 and 56 yards as a senior in high school. So he's got the leg to do it. Not this time. Yeah. Wonderlicks was your your shanked eight iron. What was that? That was a puzzle rocket five iron. <laughs> oh, I love that though. Look at that. 
Look at the teammates there for him. That's, that's great stuff. Well, they need to encourage him because there's a very good chance he'll be in that position again before the end of the game. That's right. On the right in the black warm-up jacket is the senior place kicker, Gary Wunderlich, who spent quality time with the redshirt freshman Luke Logan over on the sideline after that missed field goal from 48 yards out. Here's Patrick Laird hurtling for a gain of six to start this drive for Cal. And you make a good point. You're going to need the young kicker. Wunderlich somehow pulls his hamstring on his plant leg in the first quarter on a missed PAT. Logan, 48-yarder, your first opportunity in college. You knew his heart was racing. A lot of encouragement all the way around. Laird, student body right, broken up behind the line. DeMarcus Gates came through and made a terrific play, a loss of a couple, and now a chance for Ole Miss to get off the field on third down, third and about six. Not only had to hurdle the offensive center, Ohms there to get out of the way of the lead block to find enough strength and power to bring down a hard-running Laird. Every one of these is going to be so crucial in this fourth quarter. This game, said it beforehand, the team that wins third down and red zone touchdowns is going to win it. Whoever wins third downs here over the last, last 12 minutes, I'll double down on that. Much lower scoring game, though, than we expected. Play clock down to one. The snap is off, but the play blown dead. It looks like a timeout was taken by Justin Wilcox from the Cal sideline. Timeout, California. First timeout of the half. And we talked about the bloodlines and Ole Miss for Matt Luke. Well, Justin Wilcox grew up in a football world as well as Dad Dave, a Hall of Fame linebacker with the 49ers. We'll step aside for a moment. ESPN College Football is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And in part by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Well, it seems like every September day at Berkeley is a perfect day to take a selfie, and it has turned into a beautiful night to watch a football game. And what a great game it has been. The crowd that has shown up here at Memorial Stadium Cal's campus has been treated to a good one. Bob Wischusen, Brock Eward, Allison Williams, third down and six after the timeout. Bowers under pressure, extends the play. He's going to try and run for it. He leaps to the 40-yard line, but he's short. He's sold out to try and get the first down. And he was stopped by a couple of Rebels led by Breland Speaks. This quarterback coach loves this. This is Marcus Tuiasasopo in his heyday at Washington, leading the Huskies to a Rose Bowl. You do whatever it takes, man. You go compete, you sacrifice. Mom may like this as well, the former gymnastics coach. Just short. And Ole Miss had to hustle to get players off the field and avoid 12 men on the field. And now flags everywhere downfield before the play. And maybe this is 12 men on the field for Ole Miss. Can't happen. That is a turnover. There is the extra possession yep. that Justin Wilcox was hoping would be gifted to his Cal Bears. You can see 11 players, if you count them up, for Ole Miss in your picture. They also had a return man downfield. And that doesn't include two players that were sprinting off the field. Twelve men on the field. And a free first down for Cal at their own 45-yard line. Fourteen Ole Miss penalties matches their total for the first two games. Laird. Thrown back after a gain of two and a half. Well, I'll say this for Matt Luke. This is his job interview. This is the best resume over the next 10 games he's going to put together. And on the positive side tonight, his kids have played relentlessly. I mean, they have played so hard for him. But the discipline and the attention to detail, especially pre-snap, is going to nod him. 
dropped on the tunnel screen. That seemed to be set up for Vic Morton. That's a break for Ole Miss. It'll be third down and seven. Well, when your head coach has to resign in disgrace, you want a guy that lives, eats, breathes, and has grown up bleeding the red and blue of your program, and that is Matt Luke. He is Ole Miss through and through. Three generations of Luke men have played for the Rebels in Oxford. It's a dream job. All out blitz. Just shy of the first down. Demarcus Gates made the stop on Patrick Laird. It's fourth down and about a half yard to go. And will Justin Wilcox go for it? It looks like he will. This is where you have got to use your cadence and be willing to do that as well. Now you've already burned the one time out, so I don't think you're going to take the play of trying to get them to jump off sides and risk burning another. The play clock's already down to 13. Oh, this they still is... haven't signaled it in. They will probably have to burn their second time out. And that's exactly what Justin Wilcox is going to do. I guess if he figures with a one point lead, he's going to have to use a timeout anyway. Take the maximum amount of time off the clock before calling it. So he does. But now only one timeout remaining for Cal. Let's take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by Chick fil A. And wall to wall in the top 10, everyone's a winner. That will change. Just give it a few weeks. Well, it almost did. Look what USC had to deal with two overtimes to sneak past Texas. But for the most part, it was cruise control for everyone else in the top ten. That defense right there. Holy smokes. <laughs> that group up front. We've seen what a front four can do in the NFL. The Giants, the Broncos win Super Bowls. They just win Super Bowls. And when you've got one that you just does not matter. And Lamar Jackson is Superman, but not against a D-line like that. After the Cal timeout, their offense stays on the field. They're going to go for it on fourth down and a half yard just outside the 46-yard line. If they're only going to use the hard count, they would have to use their last timeout or just take a delay of game penalty before the punt. No, they will hand it off. And Vic and Wary busts free. One man to beat. down to the 21 yard line on fourth down and a foot. CJ Moore saved the touchdown. We saw it earlier on the other side with Wilkins just in that situation in a short yardage situation in that time the awareness of awareness did not close his eyes. I think a lot of times those running backs they run into that darkness there think I could just get the first down no there are big plays to be had when everybody sells out and you can get to that second level and where are you again one yard I'll take us inside of nine minutes to go and watch my knuckleball 99 I have not called his name an awful lot oh my gosh what a collision <laughs> that is 5'10 300 pounds of Malik McMorris into the hardest tackler Marcus Gates number three <laughs> if you could feel what that must have felt like for those two guys two Brahma Bulls to collide in the backfield wow Lair tries to turn the corner and can't beat the speed of the Ole Miss defense to the edge. Victor Evans was there first. And now getting up with Olympus Evans, so he'll head back to the sideline. But that's a loss back to the 23-yard line. And we've got another Ole Miss Rebel down in the field. Now check that, that's Evans. I thought he was going to try to get to the sideline, but he thinks better of it, just goes down and allows the trainers to come out and help him on the field. So while we have an injury timeout, got a reminder that Sage Steele is back in Bristol. So start your day with her, Randy and Jay, weekdays at 7 a.m. on ESPN. It's the new Sports Center AM. They'll get you updated all, on all the latest sports news, the late game highlights, everything else. You can catch it as well, streaming live on the ESPN app if you're on the go. Now with eight and a half minutes to go, third down and 12, big play coming here. 
big play, and this was a big collision. I just love this play. And not only because I love 99, and I loved him from the minute I started to watch, but this epitomizes today's game. He's going to come, and he's going to lead, and you're going to see a blitzing linebacker, and that's 300 pounds of force coming downhill <laughs> right there for two finesse teams, right, that on paper love to throw it. And it's come down to the physical presence here at the point of attack in the fourth quarter. Third down and 12. Inside field goal range is Cal, and if they kick a field goal, it would force Ole Miss to score a touchdown to take the lead. Powers can't take a sack. Got to throw it away, and he does. And gets buried out of bounds as he unloads a throwaway with Marquise Haynes in hot pursuit. So here comes Matt Anderson. Of course, we thought we might have of all the games that we get this season, quite possibly the best two field goal kickers in this game. Well, Cal still has theirs. This is a big advantage for them. As Anderson missed from 46 earlier, one for two on the night. This one from 40. And that one sails far and wide to the left. So Anderson has missed a couple, and it's still only a one-point game with 7.48 to go. Ole Miss has the football back. Down by one here in Berkeley. The difference on the scoreboard right now between Ole Miss and Cal, one point. And it was that shanked extra point from Gary Wunderlich where he strained his left hamstring, and he is out of the game. Luke Logan takes over a kicker for Ole Miss. He has already missed a field goal attempt, his first career attempt. As Devon Peniman is driven back after a gain of a yard and a half. Will Ole Miss at some point get him another chance? And Luke wants to make sure he's ready if they do. He's been over here practicing off the tee. Gary Wonderlich looking on. And I talked to Gary briefly. He said after Luke missed that field goal attempt, he told him just to shake it off. You're going to get another ch chance. Have confidence in yourself because we have confidence in you. Just really trying to encourage him and, and, and give him that belief that he can go out there and make a big field goal for them. Shea Patterson goes down on the scramble. And another perfectly timed, well-conceived blitz that Ole Miss's group up front doesn't have an answer for. And a quarterback that right now, I think, mentally and physically, is scrambling. Third down and ten. Four-man rush. Patterson in trouble. Throws it away. to the line of scrimmage nope and you're gonna see it right here here's my clicker here's yet another pressure right and a running back's got to pick up and, and here's your tackle box that he's gonna scramble and get outside but running back doesn't pick it up scrambling scrambling mentally physically is he outside the tackle box he's right at it ball doesn't come close so that costs Ole Miss some real estate and Will Gleason will have to punt from the end zone that's a go from inside the five their catch in plus territory for Vic Wharton. Next Saturday on ABC, a Big Ten battle as Saquon Barkley leads Penn State on the road into Kinnick Stadium to take on the Hawkeyes. 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Also streaming live on the ESPN app. What a learning opportunity for Matt Luke to coach through and to teach through all these penalties. What an opportunity for both these young quarterbacks to play with so much pressure on them every single play under constant duress from a couple very aggressive physical defenses. Huge experience gained tonight. Laird. Right at the line of scrimmage driven back. Great pursuit by that Ole Miss defense and Marcus Gates gets another tackle. Loss of a half yard. Thank you. 
I know Cal likes to play at times with tempo, but have we not reached the point in the game where maybe you want to work on the clock a little bit and not snap it with 15 or more on the play clock? Right now it's a 12. And they snap it with nine. Bowers, slam. Short of the first down to Brandon Singleton. Brings up a big third down, third and about three. What do you want to do? You want to get to your very best play. What are you expecting? All right, if you're Bo Baldwin, you've gotten a feel now for 55 minutes of this game. All of the different pressure that you have been under. Which mismatch can you create? Who are you comfortable with? And can Ross Bowers continue to stand in and deliver on these critical third downs against heat and pressure that you know is coming? Roll out for Bowers. Throws one wide right, wide open. It's Noah. First down and then some. Conovai Noah could not have been more wide open. Uh, you get in a bunch, and you know 99.9% .9 on third down what's coming. And what's coming is going to be a little rub around. And as defenders, you cannot rub and bump into each other. You just cannot afford to do that. You have got to find a way to get out over the top of that rub route from Vic Wharton. They don't. And the security blanket tonight. And so many of these third downs and many other situations has been Noah. And they're doing what you want now, Bob, taking that play clock way down. Well, they better get set and be ready to snap the ball. They're late getting set. Play clock at three. Barely get the play off. And it's in Wary. For a gain of two to the 25-yard line. Here's Shepard. Brought him down. And that will take us under four and a half minutes to go. Well inside field goal range, and a field goal here would force Ole Miss to score a touchdown to take the lead. Pressure. Fumbled snap. Powers picks it up, heading in the wrong direction, and throws it away. Nice catch. Composure for the redshirt sophomore. <laughs> is it just me, or does it feel like this entire game is just third down? I mean, we have had 35 third downs. 8 of 21 for Cal, just a tick better than the 4 of 14 of Ole Miss. It has really hit the skids in any rhythm and tempo. 35 third down conversion opportunities. This, number 36. And they don't want to leave it again to Matt Anderson, who has missed two kicks from distance. Third down and eight. Here comes the blitz. Bowers on a slam inside the 10 yard line. The ball comes out. VC, are they going to call that a reception? No, they will say incomplete. And that's a break for Jordan VC. Did he have possession? Did he make a football move? Or was this the right call? Incomplete pass. Boy, that is very close. Very close. So here is a field goal attempt to try and make it a four point game. Anderson lets it go, and this one is good. Three forty four to go. Ole Miss now down by four. They'll have a chance, though, when we come back to Berkeley. Week two, Monday Night Football. Matthew Stafford and the Lions take on Eli Manning and the Giants. Looks like they'll have Odell Beckham. We'll find out, though, officially on Monday night. Our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's at 6 on ESPN in Spanish. A huge play a moment ago that wasn't reviewed. At least, it certainly wasn't further reviewed and buzzed down by the replay booth. And it turned out to afford Cal an opportunity to kick the field goal to make it a four-point game and Brock this is worth at least another look yeah would you have buzzed down if you were the replay booth to take a further look at whether or not this was yes. a completed pass in a fumble? yeah and I was just waiting for that to happen on the field now 
is that overwhelming evidence and it's called on the field and that is the most important thing and it was called incomplete on the field you and I went to the replay convention the most difficult judgment they make is catch no catch I think in that case it was called that way on the field and as they looked at it quickly they didn't see anything to change that first and ten for Ole Miss at their own 25 yard line Wilkins on a cutback He picks up about three. Now, the one thing that this does do is it makes the situation for Ole Miss cut and dry. Yep. They do not need to rely now on a redshirt freshman kicker who has never kicked a field goal successfully in a game before. Now, they know they have to score a touchdown. Jay Patterson looking at a three-man rush. Over the middle, tipped ball. Incomplete. It'll be third down. And seven. No, you know who they need to rely on? A true sophomore gunslinger who won two state championships in the state of Louisiana before he went to the IMG Academy down there in Florida where Matt Luke and crew recruited him from and was nothing but a champ. And champions love adversity. And this is your moment, Shay. to go well it was your moment and there's still three minutes to make up for it but a third critical interception and it's been a similar theme tonight it has been a defensive scheme that has overwhelmed this offensive line and Shea Patterson and I love the encouragement there there's your Chucky Mullins award winner there's your senior there's a guy that's not going to get to a bowl game this year in Marquis Haynes. They're doing nothing but you what you want out of a senior with a young player. Get your head up and make up for it. And if I'm going to read what I think he just said, he pointed up to the scoreboard. And I think he pointed up to the fact that there's still three minutes on the clock. So shake it off. You're about to go that's back right. out there with three minutes to go. Now, yes, you need two scores, but we can score in a blink with this offense. I'm sure that is exactly... What Marquis Haynes is telling the sophomore quarterback. And Reed is what he did not do. And I wrote these words down from Phil Longo. If it's scream and take it. The only thing that was screaming there was the drop defender, Cameron Good, right into that area where schematically they want to take that first read away. It wasn't screaming. Except for six the other way. And what a tremendous catch and run for Cameron Good to finish. Cal trailed 16 to 7 at halftime. What a second half for the Bears. Jalen Jones from the goal line. Blockers out in front. Cut down at the 31. Good special teams tackle by Travion Beck. So now Shea Patterson in a game that's not over yet, especially with college rules where you are going to get the clock stopping with every first down. Yep. They only have one timeout left, but you can extend the game in college more than you can in the NFL. Needs two scores, but it is not out of the realm of possibility. Protection, shots downfield, chunk plays. He scrambles forward for a gain of two. And tackled in the field of play. That rolls the clock. And he's a little gimpy coming up on that lower leg. He has taken a beating tonight. This four-man rush from every which way has been such a factor. And that last hit from Chinadu Adogu. Second and eight. Low snap again. No one open downfield. Now he slings one to the sideline. Coming back to try and help out the quarterback was DeMarcus Lodge, but it's incomplete. He couldn't hold on. Now it's third down and eight. 
I'll tell you who else you're missing, not just your center, Sean Rawlings, with lots of low snaps. It's tremendous effort, just could not control the reception through the contact. You're missing A.J. Brown as well. Security blanket gone since the first series of the game. Here comes a blitz on third down. Patterson flushed out. He'll heave one down the sideline. It's a duck and it's incomplete, but the flag out. An underthrown ball sometimes will be a big challenge for defensive backs to avoid pass interference. And the Cal defensive backs on that play, it looks like Travion Beck on Markel Pack. Fall pass victim. interference, defense number 22. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Yeah, and that is just a, a young DB there. A true sophomore that's on the field. And Justin Wilcox is saying, geez, third and 15, throwing up a duck, a prayer. And that's where your young defensive backs just have to have the, the patience and the resolve to not freak out. And they continue to trust their technique. Keeps the game alive, though, for Ole Miss. They've got it near midfield. Long throw for Patterson, this time short. Try to get it outside the numbers to DK Metcalf. 2.08 to go. With only one timeout remaining and 2.08 on the clock, or check that two timeouts for Ole Miss, you wonder if they might try and get into field goal range first. You need two scores. One of them has to be a field goal. Patterson dumps it off. Nice move to stay inbounds at first for Van Jefferson. Picks up some yardage down to the 40-yard line. That is a first down with two minutes to go. And you're so right. It is an eternity in college football. Unlike those games on Sunday where that clock is running and it is moving, you get first downs, you stop that clock. Ample opportunity with two timeouts. Right between the hash marks. A gain of seven and a half to Van Jefferson. And I think if you had a kicker you trusted rather than a freshman, you may employ that earlier philosophy you mentioned to get the first score, but I just don't think you can do that with a total unknown right now. Patterson down the sideline for Lodge. Broken up. Third down and two. 127 to go. The problem though, Brock is if you try so hard to score the touchdown and get obsessed with that on this possession, yep. you still have to have time on the back end for an onside kick and another offensive possession to get into field goal range. So even though you have an inexperienced kicker, you have to leave yourself enough time for at least another chance to score. They pick up the first down underneath to Markel Pack, and that'll stop the clock for the moment. And you got to go. 23 to go. And these are the seconds right here. Watch this. That ball's going to get set, and you've got to go. But you can't even waste five seconds in these situations. And that's now eight, nine. Got to go. Here comes the blitz again. It's picked up down the sideline for Nixon. And it's broken up again. This Cameron kid's, Bynum, this the redshirt freshman, does it again. Yeah, this kid's good. I asked Justin, what did he inherit? Came into this program, what did he inherit? A lot of really good, skilled wide receivers. And some young DBs they feel good about. That's excellent. Get into the body of the receiver, and then you time it. His eyes, his hands, your eyes, your hands. That's a redshirt freshman standing on his own one-on-one -on -one out there. Patterson makes a man miss. He's got room. And he will get out of bounds at the 16-yard line. One minute to go. Would you think about kicking the field goal now? I think about taking a couple shots in the end zone. And again, if I had my veteran kicker, all-conference kicker, it's a different story. I just got a freshman that is a total unknown to me, but this ball has got to get past the sticks. They want the shovel pass, and they get it to Jordan Wilkins. Now they'll have to use a timeout. Down to the 14-yard line. And then a timeout is called by Ole Miss from the sideline. 52 seconds to go. 
Now, I certainly understand the point that you're making about having an inexperienced kicker and maybe needing to get him as close as possible. Yeah. But now you're down to 52 seconds it's an onside kick and now. one timeout. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. it's an onside kick. Yeah. It was going to be an onside yes. kick no matter what the scoring play was here. But we go back to what brought us to this point of maybe Luke Logan factoring into the end of the game, and that was Gary Wunderlich straining his hamstring on a missed extra point earlier in the first half, and then Logan missing badly on his only attempt. And, and, and beyond that, it's been a beatdown. I mean, it has been a, a group up front. The Matt Luke, who is a proud offensive lineman, a proud offensive line coach, is going to look at this tape and say, man, it was really easy the first couple weeks. We blocked everybody up. It was four-man rushes, maybe a blitz here or there. And it's just been a totally blurred, fuzzy picture tonight for everybody. And when they lost their center as well, and they lost A.J. Brown, they sure lost a lot of continuity. Over the middle, and that's dropped. Markel Pack, alligator arms. It'll be third down and eight with 48 seconds to go, and only one timeout left for Ole Miss. Pretty impressive. They have owned the second half so far this season. Pretty impressive, pretty heady stuff here, pretty mature stuff from a team three games in to a new head coach. Patterson looking for the back pylon. Incomplete. And now you have to kick the field goal. Fourth down and eight. At least I would think 43 seconds to go. You have to kick the field and goal. And their offense is staying on the field, which makes little sense, I would think, in terms of still needing a field goal to be one of the two scores you need. And they're going to go for it on fourth and eight. How close do you need your kick, your kicker? in order to try the field goal if it's not going to be something you're going to try from the 15 yard line this makes no sense all right they're going for it on fourth and eight play clock at three does patterson realize it it goes to zero it's delay of game five yard penalty fourth down and now it's fourth down and 13. Can you in any way explain this to me? Can you make a case the other side? I, I, I can make no case for why you would not, especially in fourth and eight, unless you just simply do not trust your kicker at all. Well, then you're saying that the field goal can't even factor in here. We need two touchdowns. And it's all on Shea Patterson. Here comes the blitz. Patterson under pressure. And that will do it. Devontae Downs on the blitz. Gets the sack of Shea Patterson. And the Cal Bears are a kneel down away from a win over Ole Miss. It's been the same story all night, man. It's been such fun football to study and to talk through and for Shea to learn from. I mean, just where is it going to come from? Here, 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 here. Where is this rush coming from? Where is the picture? And what showed me in any way that this middle linebacker, other than him just staring at me all night long, trying to confuse and harass, and he does, in an offensive line that was left swimming and scrambling, just like the quarterback. The D coordinator, five times over, some of the best in football. He's got a good staff around him. So I didn't come into this game on the way over here, Bob. I said, I'll tell you what, if Cal gets this one tonight, they went at North Carolina, a Weber State team, tough, gritty, had to overcome them. A win tonight against an SEC team in year number one for Justin Wilcox. Along with Coach Brom out at Purdue, I think he's turned some heads as far as level of accomplishment here in this month of September. Well, Justin Wilcox called the defenses for Paul Christ at Wisconsin. And he credited that experience, as you said, Brock, with preparing him to now take over this program. And his defense held Ole Miss scoreless over the final nine possessions. Brilliant. 27-16 Cal over Ole Miss.
for Allison Williams and Brock Ewart. I'm Bob Wachusen. So long for Berkeley. Terrific win for the Cal Bears. Sports Center in 15 seconds.